outside of prophesied the downfall of this wicked nation known as America, aka Babylon, according to the Holy Scriptures. And before we begin, we'll give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, Ba'ashem, how is the true holy name of the heavenly father who this world even called God? For Hashem is in the name and Tower Shine. That is the true name of our uh, only begotten of, of the Lord, only begotten Son, who the world even called uh, Jesus, and the Rakaka is the Holy Spirit. Alright, we want to give double honors unto our apostles and elders of the great millstone, which are the true leaders of the nation of Israel, that the Lord has set forth on this earth to lead and to guide and to be great examples for the nation of Israel. And also we want to say shalom to the 144,000 men that are laboring, toiling in this work for the sake of Yahweh Bashan al We also want to say shalom to the innumerable multitude of the of the men, women, and children that are believing. Yeah, because we need something to do with that. We so, to say shalom. I don't know. Before I start, I want to give all praise to Yahweh Bashan al You know, and the body of Yahweh Bashan al for having us out here another week to do his work, man, to do his will. You know, we're out here, uh, you know, uh, waking up the elect, man. You know, we're thankful for this position, man. You know, we're thankful that this 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 life that we have on this side is not is not for long. You know, because it, if it wasn't for the comfort of the Lord, man, we'll be we'll be in ruins, man. All right, we'll be destroyed. But because we're comforted, you know, knowing that the promises of the Lord still stand, His covenant with us still stands. All right, and and, and that's why we don't stress out, man, about the things that we're going that we're uh, going through on this side. All right. Because the uh, because the prophecies, man, the prophecies let us know that the Lord is, is is working, man. He's moving. That things are coming to pass at a pace that you know is 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 is, is, is of His will, you know. But we're watching, you know, and we see that we're at the end, you know, because He He gives us these tokens, all right? Can somebody give me? That? Yeah. Uh, Habakkuk chapter two. Beginning at verse uh, verse one, and it reads, "I will stand upon my watch and set me up the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I and what I shall answer when I am reproved." And the Lord Yahweh shall now shall answer me and said, "Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time." But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. All right, the vision is yet for an appointed time, and it shall speak and not lie. All right, we're witnessing the downfall of our enemies. We're, witness we're witnessing the prophecies coming to pass, man. We're witnessing, you know, uh, uh, plagues, the oncoming plagues. We're witnessing the oncoming famine, you know? And we're witnessing the chariots that, that, that the Most High is showing unto us, man, and showing unto our enemies, man. These things are written in the scriptures, all right? So we, we know that we have we have but a short time here, man, and our enemies have but a short time. But the prophecies, they're not slacking. All right? The prophecies, they're showing themselves. All right? That the, the, the house of our enemies, the house, their house is divided. All right? And we're sitting back and watching. All right? We're sitting back and we're witnessing the words of Yahweh Rashi Mashach come to pass, man. All right? Keep going on. Uh, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, mm -hmm. but at the end it shall speak and not lie. It shall speak and not lie, man. Words of Yahweh Shah is isn't lying. But the world wants us to think that it's not coming to pass. It is coming to pass. It's just that we're, we have the we have the, uh, uh, the the gift of faith, man. The Lord has blessed us with eyes to see, that we may see, and ears to hear, that we may hear. Alright, so as things start to play out, we're able to see it and hear it. While two-thirds of our people they can't see nor hear the things that are coming to pass. Alright? Because they haven't been blessed with the gift of faith. But the most the, but the most high has still shown our people mercy. All right, still by, by reaching his hand out towards them. All right, showing them mercy. But they're not receiving the mercy of the Heavenly Father. They don't want it. They want what's on this life. They want what's in this in, in the world. All right. Go and tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Go and tarry, wait for it. You know, the Lord told us that it, it, it's going to tarry just a little bit. All right, but the, everything is done according to the will of the Heavenly Father. Everything has to be done decently and in order. Even the downfall of our enemy, of our enemies, all right, and the other nations, all right, because the other nations they're falling apart just as just as much as uh, Esau even is falling apart because they've drunk in the wine of uh, 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 of, uh, uh, of that fornication, all right. They took on the ways of Esau even, so it's only right that they fall just uh, uh, right along with Esau even and their sister. You know, these are the things that we're witnessing. Go ahead, on. Hebrews chapter four verse two. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, 
not being mixed with faith and them that heard it. All right, the word, so, so repeat that again now. Hebrews chapter four, verse two. Mm -hmm. For unto us was the gospel preached as well, as well unto them, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Right, because we, we, we put our trust in the Lord. You know, when we hear these words, we were able to see it. We're able to hear it. And we believe the words that are written in the scriptures. You know, it's the in this generation that we're living in today, we're starting to realize that two thirds of our people and the whole world, they truly don't believe in the words of the Heavenly Father. You know, but the Lord still has mercy upon our people. You know, even the two thirds. You know, it's just on this side, they're not gonna return into the Heavenly Father. All right? Two thirds of our people, you know, they're gonna receive the judgment. They're gonna receive, they're gonna taste of those nuclear missiles. All right, the unbelievers of our people, they're gonna, they're gonna taste of that plague, of those plagues that's coming. All right, they're gonna take part in the famine. All right, most importantly, the famine of the word because they refuse to listen unto the heavenly father. We're not out here speaking our words. We're speaking the words of the heavenly father, the words that are written in the scriptures. The words that a lot of our people claim that they believe. All right, but when they actually hear the words that are written in the scriptures, they doubt it. All right, because they don't like they don't like the form in which the message is delivered. They don't, they don't like the messages of the Heavenly Father. You know, because they're expecting, you know, for us to be like these so-called pastors. You know, dressing in super and, and nice clothing, dressing in or uh, driving the nicest cars. And we're not coming out, we're not coming out in that spirit. You know, we're not speaking a strange language unto our people. All right, we're communicating the words of the Heavenly right. Father unto our people in a way that they can understand. Don't come out there, mother, me. But still, our people, they, they don't want to repent. They don't want to turn from their wicked ways. Oh, go ahead, Yashka. Mm -hmm. And he's backing up on that. Uh, they want to be in that smooth spirit, like the pastors out here. Look at Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 10, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, which is this book that was spread within and without. And there was written therein lamentations more than the whole. So back up the brother, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not the public's baker, you know, we're not, that's not the spirit of the Lord, man. The spirit of the Lord is prophecy, that's the spirit of Yahweh Shai. So therefore, we come in that spirit, we let our people know that we're in these times, man. You know, we're not, we can't be no charity and turn to the Lord. We got tied up right now so we can get the word. Yep, because it's written. Lamentation, mourning, and woe. So if it's written in that, that means it's going to come to pass. So you want to be on the Murph side, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? And salvation, salvation-wise. That's right. Quick break. Second entrance, chapter 15, starting from the top. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. The prophecies are written, you know, as a sign to let us know what time we're in. Right? And these prophecies are coming to pass, though. These prophecies are being spoken to the, the chosen people, which are the so called blessed of the of America. Verse 3 Fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in the unfaithful. Not the, like the brother was saying earlier, and two thirds hear this, and they don't listen, they don't hear the faith. Just like you were born to the brother brought up earlier, they hear the word, but it's not into the faith, so there's a prophet, though. All the young people are going to die. Two thirds of our people are going to die because there's no lack of faith. You know, and that's that incredulity, that's that unbelief. You know, but with the, the, what boosts what our faith is when the words of the Heavenly Father come to pass, while uh, while while the earth is trying to be in murk, while the earth is trying, while while our enemies are trying to deceive our people, trying to trying to say peace and safety, the words of the Heavenly Father is still coming to pass. What's what the, what the, what how Washington Shah had 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 spoken. You know, they can't get around it, all right? When they try to get around it, they end up uh, 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 meeting that point even faster, all right? So, and we're not in darkness of that. We see it, but two-thirds of our people, they can't see it, you know? We're, no, one is, no one is explaining to us why the earth is in the condition that it's in. You know, our enemies are trying to come up with some other uh, 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 philosophy, some other uh, 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 reasoning of why the earth is the way it is. The way the earth is the way it is is because the Heavenly Father has uh, 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 gave our enemies a uh, uh, bounds that they cannot pass. All right, they're trying to they trying to rebuild, but the Most High is throwing it down. All right, but the Most High is going to allow them to prosper, you know, for a particular time. All right, He's going to allow our enemies to prosper to place judgment upon two thirds of our people because two thirds of our people they have to be destroyed on this side, man. They have to re they have to receive their judgment on this side. 
All right, so the Most High is going to allow Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, to prosper for a particular amount of time. But as it says in, uh, in Job, uh, if I'm not mistaken, where it says, uh, when he sits down at his table to eat, all right, uh, the Most High is going to cast, he's going he's gonna, to uh, 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 cast these stones upon him, man, which means bring down the nuclear missiles, man. Job right? 20. Uh, second Ezra is chapter 14 and uh, starting at verse 13 it says now therefore set thine house in order and reprove thy people comfort such of them has been in trouble and now renounce corruption and that's exactly what we're doing we're uh, renouncing corruption we're speaking against you know, uh, the things of this world and it says set thine house in order that starts with yourself first you know, it says, and to reprove our people, that's, that's what we do. The scripture says that they hate them that are uh, the gate. The Lord is preparing us for the judgment that's coming, man. You know, the Lord is the only one giving us the explanation of what's happening, man. Having us prepare ourselves for the further uh, uh, destruction that's coming. All right, for the further uh, uh, plagues. You know, men are going to be out here killing each other. All right? We need, you, you, we need, we need the help of the Lord. Because as the scripture says, man, we are as a word, man. We are defenseless here in Babylon. We have no, we have no other help but the heavenly father. While two thirds of our people, they want to lift up arms against Esau, Edom. All right, they want to lift up arms against each other. All right, because they don't have the spirit of the Lord with them. No, but we're comforted because we see and hear these things rumbling. All right, we we see the we see demons upon our people. We see demons upon our enemies, man, which they are demons. All right, but we're confident knowing that the Lord is going to protect us in due season, man, in due time. He's going to deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. You know? Okay, uh, verse, uh, 2 Ezra 14, verse 14, it says, Let go from thee, mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature. That's going back to what you said. Give it another lesson. Uh, so that without this truth, you know, don't have anything because you know like like right now you know we're not thinking about you know our bills stuff like that things in this world you know we just thinking about this truth thinking about preaching this word you know so we casting out that weak nature right now you know moral thoughts you know uh, you know we're not thinking about uh the things of this world we look like fools you know because we're not prepared we're not trying to stack up our bread we ain't trying to go out to college. We ain't trying to, you know, get that great job. We ain't trying to start that 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 business. You know, you know, we're not saying that you can't do those things, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand what time that we're living in. But because they don't they don't read the scriptures, they're not they, they refuse to hear the words of the Heavenly Father. They don't know what time of it, what, what what period of time they're in. But we know where we're at according to the prophecies, man. They worry about getting the bag. I gotta go back to school, I gotta get my degree. Right. Yo, those are all those moral thoughts. It's too late for that. You don't hear the you don't hear the economic uh, 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 forecasters talking about how this place, this economic system is soon to collapse. Alright? All these things are written in the scriptures. So why would you prepare to, to be here any longer? You know, here in Babylon, we live day by day. We're preparing ourselves for the oncoming judgment, which the Lord tells us to do, man. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 12, and it reads, For wisdom is a defense, and money is a, is a defense. So, so of course, you know, money, you know, we need money, so that's why, you know, we have to work, all right? Cause, you know, cause we got to eat. We got to take care of our uh, basic necessities. But, but it says wisdom is a defense. So when, when shit hit the fan, what's, what's, what's going what's gonna to be our strength? All right, just, just true. All right, Trip says in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our time. So the wisdom, that's what's going to be our defense because we already understand, okay, that the Esau is, is our enemy. So we're going to have that spiritual discernment in the times of Jacob's trouble. Okay, we see an Edomite, you know, he trying to say, hey, I got some food over here. We know, hey, nah, the scripture says never trust your enemy. Okay, right. two thirds of our people, they, they, they're going to be like group B, so you, you ain't going to be able to trust them. Okay, you know, the only thing you're going to be able to lean upon is these scriptures, and that's what's going to keep us stable in those times. And it says, but the excellency, the slacker, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. 
And when you go into that word ex excellency, it goes back to profit. Okay, so this truth, uh, this wisdom, I understand that's what's going to profit us. All right, and it says um, that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. You know, and that's what's going to preserve us here in these times. It's, it's going to uh, prolong our lives. All right, because these people, they ain't going to have no, they ain't going to have no foundation. They ain't going to have no truth to resort back to. All right, that's why they're going to be running around like a chicken with their head cut off. And that's why they can't understand us. Like that's why two thirds of our people, like our family and our friends, they can't understand that we're, while we're in the spirit that we're in. You know, because the Lord has given us eyes to see, man. We know what's coming. You know, despite what the, what, what they're trying to uh, uh, show unto us. Because you know, a lot of uh, because gas prices are going down, a lot of people are like, oh, PC safe. You know, now they're trying to look at us like, oh, see what y'all saying? Ain't nah, man. Just wait. Though it's Terry, wait for it. It's coming. All right, that's why the scripture says the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night, man. That's what Esau do. You know, Esau, you know, of course, he had to lower shit down because, you know, um, the American people going to start getting no aid. You see what's going on in, like, uh, Sri Lanka and stuff like that. So in order in order for Esau, you know, to calm your ass down, he got to drop the gas prices 20, 30 cents. Like, rock your ass back to sleep, you know? Entertainment, it, there's, he putting out more entertainment now. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yo, I, I don't even care about these rap beefs. I don't care about, you know, these comical things that, that our people are doing, man. All of a sudden, this person beefing with that person. I was like, ain't, ain't it, you know, it, it's, it's funny that they're doing it now. <laughs> more entertainment on top of more entertainment because prophecy is coming to pass, man. You know, we're watching international news, man. We're watching what's going on in the other nations, man. Because what's going to happen here is affecting the other nations first. And then it's gonna hit home. They gotta, gotta throw you off because if you start asking questions, and that means they're gonna have to uh, uh, start answering, and they don't really have a, 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 a true answer. But we have the answers. All right, we have the words of the heavenly Father telling you that, and we've been telling you these things are gonna happen. But our people refuse to listen, man. That's why when, they, when, the, when the family of the word hits, they're going to try to come look for the men of the Lord, and they're not going to find the men of the Lord. It's going to be too late. The Lord really got it too late. Uh, we got the backstage uh, pass. We, 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 we know the show. Right. You know, we just sitting back, you know, we just sitting back and winning. Right. <laughs> you know, we backstage, we, 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 we interact with our enemies. We definitely out here on the house of the Lord. Yeah, but that also shows, like, we being called, we have to do something. Right. You know, a lot of more people use this truth for entertainment. You know, it tells you how, you know, it wasn't given to everybody to know the mysteries of the kingdom to so you was given. So if you have the opportunity to get this truth, you gotta do something with it, man. Because like you said, it's gonna be a time for the family and the runner, and everybody's gonna want answers, everybody's gonna want answers. But right now, you can come out here and shoot the next and and ask the questions, man. So don't, don't take this, uh, don't take this, um, it's a moment for granted, man. Because there's going to be a time where you're not going to see the men of the Lord out here, man. John, John, the ninth chapter, you know, the fourth verse, if I'm not mistaken, said the hour coming when no man can work and could be going into the world and doing this world. But there's going to be a time where the gates of mercy are going to be closed, man. All right? So do something with the truth while you have it, man. Because that, entert that entertainment demon can feed upon our world. Uh, Jake watched these videos just to have a laugh. They watch the videos when people come to call strike, but you're really supposed to be building up. That's what these videos are for. That's what the men of the Lord are out there for. And it, huh? I was gonna say entertainment means distraction. Entertainment means distraction. So, because everybody wants the word of the most high to come how they want it to come. Right. They want the end to be how they want it to come. You know, nah, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna come the way you think it's gonna come. This is why a lot of our people are gonna be caught off guard. You know, we're, that's why it's very important to, search, to, to to follow the shepherd. We're following the shepherd. We're conducting ourselves the way that the shepherd is telling us to conduct ourselves. Right. All right, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, that's why the scripture says, uh, 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 when it says, uh, 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 trust in the Lord with all your heart right. and lean not upon thy own understanding. All right, we're not looking at the world through, through our own eyes. We're looking at the world through the eyes of the heavenly father and his son. All right, we're following him. He's letting us know what time it is. He's letting us know how to how, how to build up that defense against our enemies. All right, All right this is uh, Matthew 19, and uh, the point is in 13, I'll read verse 12. It says, he said, therefore, 
A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. So the brother was saying, don't take this moment for granted, right? So the Lord says, occupy till I come. And when you occupy something, it means to keep busy, you know, to stay busy. And and that's the thing. What if we stand busy in the, this word, man? You know, it's, it's always something for you to do. The scripture says you can never go far enough, you know, and it occupying just ain't always just doing lessons, right? Being charitable is, is, a, is a occupation. Calling a brother to check on him, that's an occupation, right? Uh, uh, Doing small things for the church, that, uh, that's an occupation. Giving your tithes and alms, those are occupations. So the Lord says, occupy till I come, which is ultimately to do the work, right? But it's a lot of things that come with spreading the gospel of the Heavenly Father. It's a lot that comes with it. So that's why you can't say, oh, that's what the Lord talks about, uh, uh, being idle. You see, so when you're being idle, right, that's when you 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 start you twiddling your fingers and you don't know what to do. But it's always something that you can do to be a better brother. To be a better man of the Lord, to, to be a better servant, it's always something that you can do. So you got to occupy until the Lord returns. Because what he ultimately, what did he, uh, I'm just going to jump, I'm, I'm not going to read, I'm just going to jump over to 22. After the men that did occupy and the one that laid up the Lord's talents in a napkin, verse 22 he says, And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant, thou knowest that I was an austere man taking up that I laid not down and reaping that I did not sow. So the Lord says, you knew I was an austere man. So why wouldn't you do what the Messiah commands? You know, when you know that he's in, he says I'm an austere man, right? And austere goes in a, a strict, rigid, right? Structure, right? Uh, he can be furious, fierce, you see? So you that's the type of God and Lord that we serve. So why wouldn't you do what he say? You, you, your mama, if your mama tell you, hey, them dishes better be done by the time I get back home, you will wash them damn dishes because you know you're going to get your ass beat if you don't. The same way applies for doing the work of the Lord. You will get your ass beat on the Lord's return if you don't do what's required of, of you, man. All right? That's it. It's simple as that. They, they don't understand the depth that the Heavenly Father is willing to go. You know, the, uh, the, the, the Southern Heavenly Father is willing to go to judge you, man. You know, we're coming in a time where there's going to be complete lawlessness, man. We're coming into a time where there's got, there's going to be an economic collapse. The dollars that you have are not going to be worth anything. So a lot of these police officers, they're not going to want to work. These EMTs, they're not going to want to work. The most high may judge you by having you get hit by a car or something and you don't die. And there ain't going to be no ambulance to come and get you. You're going to be where you're going to be where when you lay. You're going to be right there when you lay. All right? That's the judgment of the Heavenly Father. All right? Because when you had the opportunity to receive his words, you, didn't, you, you, you blocked your ears, man. You kept walking. All right, that's the judgment that's getting ready to come, man. I want to back up on what you're talking about, uh, the shepherds, you know. We call them the shepherds, therefore, you know, we have a way. You know, the Lord will give you a good man. Chapter, Matthew chapter 15, verse 14, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Sheep that have no shepherd just follow the sheep that's in front of them because they think the sheep that's in front of them you know where they're going the whole time. That sheep is just going, you know, off a cliff. And they all just go there, too. You know, where, where they see the sheep. Following, crying, and dying, they still won't follow that. But so that's why we need the shepherd. That's right. Matthew chapter 24 and beginning at 36. But of, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Okay, and that's speaking about the times of Noah. Okay, and we spiritually are in those times again. Okay, we, we coming in the same uh, lot as, as Noah. Lord willing, will we be at that number? Okay, but what Noah was doing, he was warning the people of the destruction that was about to come. But this, this destruction is going to come by way of fire. Okay, the Lord promised that he would never flood the earth by water again. So this time, this place is going to be flooded by, by fire. But these people, they don't, they not listening. Just like in the times of Noah. Because they too busy um, entangled with the cares of this world. And they, they, they too busy going on trips. Okay, they, they, they too busy uh, planning out marriages. You know, uh, uh, seeking a, a business. You know, seeking their rap careers and all these things. But 
this, this world is about to, this world is about to be uh, de destroyed. Okay, and, but you people don't understand because you're not you're not listening to the prophets. Okay, you, you, you don't pay, you don't watch the news. Okay, you, you don't you don't watch current events. Only thing you worried about is is Instagram selfies, likes. Okay, and it says verse uh, thirty nine. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, and the Lord's going He's gonna have. A, it's gonna be a certain time where where that spiritual ark is gonna be closed. Okay, right now we, we build up the spiritual the spiritual ark. Okay, in the times of uh, Noah, it was a literal ark. The Lord is building up a spiritual uh, uh, a spiritual house. Okay, but these people they carnal, so they, so they not they, they don't they don't see uh, they don't see brothers building. You know, right in front of their face, like we are now. You know, we're we're, we're building up the ark, okay? But but you people are too busy worrying about drinking, you too busy worrying about um, uh, basketball and football and all these uh, distractions. All right, entertainment. Brother said, go back to distraction, right? Gone. Yeah, that's why it's gonna come suddenly too, because you know these people they're in the house of mirth, man. These people might we might be out celebrating a birthday party or so, and then boom. They phone on the TV in the, in the little bar they at. Martial law, has, martial law has been declared. Boom! Everybody get in the house in the next five minutes section. You know, the book of Isaiah, chapter forty-seven, verse eleven. Therefore shall evil come upon thee; thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief, mischief, which goes into ruin. You know, so these people are gonna have you know just sudden destruction come upon them. Shall fall upon thee; thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly. Which thou shalt not know. You know? So that's why we got. That's why we got to uh, go and Terry wait for it. You know, because it's gonna suddenly come. But you know, we us call the brother that we can watch. We just got to keep doing what we're doing. Thank you. Know, we, you know, we we deliver out of those signs. And a precept to back you up earlier too, uh, Ezekiel 14, 9 through 10, about, uh, you know, shepherds or a sheep not having a shepherd following after the wrong person. You know, it goes into that as well. 14 and 9. Yeah. Hey, and if I may say something, if I may say something, like the brother was saying, like how the days of Noah was, it said it's going to be like when the Son of Man comes in. Why? Because it says Yahweh Shah is going to come like a thief in the night. Meaning that, hey, when a thief comes into your house, oh, if a thief comes into your house while you're sleeping, you're not going to know because you're sleeping. And it's the same thing with these people. Our people are spiritually asleep, man. They're not awake. They're, like the brother said, they're not seeing the token. They're not seeing the sign, man. But if you're awake, then nobody can break into your house because you're going to see it. You're going to hear it. But our people are supposed to be dead, man. That's why you have a shot. It's going to come like a thief in the night, man. Look at look at our people. Even though the majority of these people are eating like, you know, on an hour with parents. But our people are out here, too. Like the brother said, they're in the secret of murder, man. There's going to be a time where you're not going to be able to come downtown, man, and go to your brunch. All right, and walk these streets. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be mayhem out here. Yep, it was, uh, it's locked, but, uh, but wait, wait, uh, the best time a robber breaks in is when it's nighttime and it's dark. Right. Uh, a robber ain't gonna break into your house when it's light outside and, and they see lights inside the house. You know, they gonna break in when it when it's dark and, 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 and people sleeping. Right. You know? I got a quick read. This is Ecclesiastes chapter chapter eight verse five. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall fear, shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. That word heart going back to your mind, it says discerneth both time and judgment, man. And we understand that we're coming into the times of judgment that's about to take place this earth. And it says, verse six, because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery, the misery of man is great upon him. All right, the misery of man is great upon him because there's going to be all out chaos coming in these streets of America, man. All right, pandemonium. All right, man going against man, woman going against children. All right, it tells you how a man shall uh, uh, have, have no love upon his neighbor, man, because of the, the, the lack of bread, man. Or how about um, in Matthew the 24th chapter, how it speaks about the love of many shall wax cold. These people walking up the street as friends, but when they ain't no food, ain't gonna be no friends, man. So that's the time we're coming into. Even women, they coming out here walking the street being friends, but when they ain't no food, when you ain't gonna be able to take care of your hair, I mean your your hair, take care of your nail, all that shit ain't gonna matter the times we're coming into. So that's why you need to get right. But we know this word is only for the elect. All right, this word is only gonna be for that one third, man, because the rest of these people again are spiritually dead.
And at that time, the Lord is going to cause our tongues to cleave to the roof of our mouths, man. You know, and, and it's, it's going to be no more talking in them days, man. Right. You know, what, what, what more can we tell? What, what more can we say unto you? You know, you got to go out to the market and buy yourself, man. You got to go seek the Heavenly Father yourself. Because the time, the somehow, some way, you know, the Heavenly Father is going to, he's going to cause us to, our, our mouths to shut. Right. It, it may be uh, uh, by unrighteous decrees. It may be the internet being cut off. You know, but once that happened, man, we ain't got nothing for you. All right, because you weren't you when when the Lord, when you had when you had when the Lord had mercy upon you, you didn't take that opportunity. You didn't you didn't you didn't take you didn't take the hand of the heavenly Father. You didn't seek His counsel. Now, when you're in, at a point of death, now you want to come seek in the middle of the Lord. We ain't got nothing for you. I mean, honestly, all we can tell you is, hey, man, you know, read the scriptures. You know, if the scriptures are around, you know, hey, uh, uh, pray, pray to the heavenly Father. We're not gonna tell you the name. If the heavenly Father don't put it put it in our spirit to tell you, we're not gonna tell you. You're on your own, all right? Because you are those rebellious children, man. You're gonna receive that judgment. You know, brothers been putting in hard work, man. Brothers, have, they, 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 they cast off the ways of the world, man. All right? They became, they renewed themselves in the spirit, man. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Shah, man. They came back unto the heavenly father as children. All right? And, 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 and seek, the, seek the heavenly father 10 times more. Well, a lot of people, they don't want to do that, man. The unbelievers of our people, they don't want to return to the Heavenly Father and, and, and seek the scriptures. They want to, because it's them same people. Right. Being reincarnated. How about in our first, in, in the first exodus, in our first captivity, you know, through Moses, you know, the Heavenly Father took our people, you know, away from that. And in the wilderness, what did they say? They were scoffing. Right. Being unbelievers. Why? Because they wanted to stay in Egypt. Those leeks, those onions in Egypt. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's our same people coming back in their lot, man. They love America too much. And that's why they gotta they gotta die here, man. They're not prepared for freedom. Right. I mean, because they they, 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 they don't have it in their minds that they'll ever be free. You know, but the Lord has made us free. The scripture says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And we're free in our mind. Because when Esau starts cutting these things off, he's really making you free. He's really saying, hey, you're on your own. Yo. But two-thirds of these people, they're not gonna, they're not gonna know how to live. They're not gonna know how to survive. So when that time comes, they're gonna run right back to Esau. Yo. And that's a shameful position to be in. And we're not gonna be in that position. Because I, we, we stand upon the rock. We stand upon your house shot. All right, we put our trust in the Lord. While two-thirds of our people, they put their trust in, the, in, 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 in Satan, man. Right. All right, they put their trust in Esau, Edom. It's uh, 2nd Ezra, chapter 1 and 7. Am not, I, am not I, even he, that brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage? But they have provoked me unto wrath and despised my counsel. Pull, pull thou off then the hair of thy head and cast all evil upon them. For they have not been obedient unto my law, but it is a rebellious people. How long shall, shall I forbear them unto whom I have done so much good? Many kings have I destroyed for their sake. Pharaoh with his servants and all his power have I smitten down. I'll keep reading. I'm gonna jump to verse 12 and it reads, Speak thou therefore unto them saying, Thus saith the Lord, I led you through the sea and in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. I, I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest. I gave you light, I gave you light and a pillar of fire, and great wonders have I done among you. Yet have you forgotten me, saith Yahweh Shinal Shah. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, the quails were, were as a token for you. I gave you tents for your safeguard, nevertheless he murmured there, and triumph not in my name for the destruction of your enemies. See, that, that's why it was important this whole time for the Heavenly Father to bring us back into remembrance. So we can go back and read the scriptures and, and, and read about the good things that the Heavenly Father has done unto us. But that's why it's so important that our enemies every year reminds us that we were slaves. Because in the, in the minds of a lot of our people, that's where they start off at. All right? In the mind, that's, and that's true. If you ask any, if you ask any of our people, uh, do you know what life was like prior before slavery? They don't know. All right, as far back in their mind, all they know is like, oh, uh, 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 we, we were slaves, yep. that's it. But that's the, that's the foundation that Esau Edom wants to put in your mind. He doesn't want to tell you about the great things that we were doing prior before captivity. We were doing some wicked things. We were doing wickedness, 
But the Lord was still dealing with us on a particular level, man. Because we're still his people. All right, we ruled Europe. We, in, we invented all, we, we invented the modern world. All right, all these inventions that you see that are uh, 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 helping uh, help a society prosper, those things came through us. The, our enemies have taken all the knowledge that the Most High has given us and used them. All right, and, and, and a, lot of the, a lot of the technology that you see today is actually old. But because he put the earth in darkness, he, re he, re he reintroduced you all this old stuff. Slapped new paint on it, made it look shiny, and told you that it was new. All this stuff is old, man. All right, because you, and, and primarily for our people, we've forgotten, man. But the Lord loves us more than all our enemies. Loves us more than our own fathers and mothers. All right, by bringing us back into remembrance and reminding us who we are. And how great we are. You know, but we fell off, man. We decided to do our own thing. We decided to do the way, uh, keep the ways of our enemies. And look where we are today. All right, our enemies are making a mockery of us, man. All the clown stuff you see our people doing on TV, that's a mockery, man. That's not who we are. When Edomites, the so-called white people, when they come here, they're expecting us to rap. They're expecting us to dance. So when they see us do, uh, 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 reading the scriptures, all right, and, and, and going into conversation and going, in, going into depth and the things that we know and understand, he feels offended because that's not, the, that's not what he taught us to be like. You know, but this is how the Lord created us to be, man. He created us to be the head and not the tail. A lot of our people, the wisdom have left them, man. Two-thirds of our people, they, the wisdom has left them, man, because they haven't uh, built their foundation upon the Heavenly Father. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But the Most High has chosen the foolish, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, us, us being those foolish things. And it says that the Most High has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Yeah, man, because we're, we're, we're not out here with expensive clothing. We don't drive the finest cars. We don't, we don't live in uh, big homes, all right? We don't have uh, 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 doctor's degrees. We don't, we don't own, you know, large businesses. Nah, man, we come from the ghettos, man. We come, we come from a low, we come from a low estate. All right. So the Lord is using His people, man, that were at, that were set at a low estate to confound the, to, to confound the wicked, man. To, to confound the wise of this world. You know that's why they look at us with, 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 in the way that they look at us, man. It's cool, you know. <laughs> but this is how this is how powerful the Heavenly Father is, man. He's, li he's lifting us up out of the lower state, man, just as he did the so-called white man, man, to punish us, all right? The Most High took the so-called white man from the caves, built him up just so he can rule over us in this time because of our disobedience. Right. But now his time has come to an end, all right? Now he's going back into captivity and the other nations, and that's balance. We were, we were scattered, and that was a part of the curses. All right, we were scattered amongst all the all the other nations across the four corners of the earth, man. This one nation. All right, we had we were forced to serve all the other nations. Isn't it balanced that the heavenly Father take us and have the other nations serve us? That's balance, man. This is Isaiah chapter ten and verse twenty, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, such as our escape of the house of Jacob, shall no more stay upon him that smote him, but shall stay upon the Lord Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. So that's the problem with Jacob's family. So that's why we're preparing, preparing ourselves now to rely on the Lord, rely on these scriptures, all right? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you know, being our stability. Okay, because when all hell breaks loose, no, just like the brother said, he's going to be running back to Esau. All right, that's going to lead him to getting the MOTP. Okay, he's going to be getting the, uh, uh, even now, uh, getting the jump shot. Okay? So you got to rely on the Lord, you know, now. So in the time of trouble, it's going to be easy for you. Because you can't, it's not going to be a, just a, a, a flip of the switch. All right? So you got you to you gotta, you gotta get yourself ready now. You know, just like in the sport, you, you can't. Now work out in the off season, and then, then once the season comes, you gonna flip that switch, right? You gonna be, you gonna be great. You gotta, you gotta work. You gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta practice all year round. 
So that's what we're doing. We're, we're practicing. You know, and it's a beautiful thing because I remember I, I spoke to the brother about what I put in the chat the other week and how the father, he tossed his son into the pool, all right, because he had taught his son how to swim, all right, but I guess he was supervised the whole time. But the time came where his father lifted up his little boy, he kissed him, and then he just flipped him upside down and threw him in the pool. But what did the child do? He started panicking at first. The child remembered what he was taught, and he calmed down and he started floating. You know, I still, I still rem uh, remember that video, man, and that was a very impactful video because that's exactly what the heavenly Father is getting ready to do unto our people, man. By allowing our enemies to come down on us, man. By allowing that flood to come down on our people, man. All right, while two thirds of our people they're going to be in distress. All right, but the elect they're not going to be as distressed as other people. All right, because we're going to remember the, the words of the Heavenly Father, and we're going to calm down, all right, and we're going to start floating, all right, and the Lord is going to send his angels, man, to, to, to help and deliver the elect, man, all right, but we're going to have to get over this flesh, man, you know, that's what the Lord is, that's what the Lord has prepared us to do, man, to get over the flesh and to trust in him, you know, two-thirds of our people, they're going to put their trust in man, you know, the Lord didn't teach us to put our trust in man. This is why we're not afraid of the cutoff that's coming. While two thirds of our people, the unbelievers of our people, they're afraid of the cutoff. This is why when, when, that, little, when that little trial came and with, with the whole uh, shutdown, our people, a lot of our people ran to go get juiced. But now we're laughing at them because now we're looking at them, what was the whole point? Because we're fine. We put our trust in the Heavenly Father and look at us today, man. Out here still getting still 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 getting uh diagnosed with that still man and now yeah. now you're starting to see more and more of these plagues starting to appear because that's the judgment of the heavenly father they didn't, they didn't put their trust and that's just a small trial it, actually it wasn't a small trial that was a huge trial all right because a lot of my people fell for that trap now 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 the, the, that that first layer is starting to dissolve now a lot of these plagues are going to start to manifest themselves all right, and then who knows how much more, how many more traps that are out there? You know, because a lot, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of diseases may be able to survive in pork. You know, so the UI is still eating pork. Okay, come. The Most High got a plan for you. He got a judgment for you. All right, the Most High man, he, 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 he man, his ways are beyond our ways, man. His thoughts are beyond our thoughts, man. He's the Most High man. He's the highest mind. But a lot of these people, they're going to find out, man, when they should have put their trust in the Heavenly Father, man. When you put your trust in the Heavenly Father, the Lord is going to guide you. But you have to trust Him. A lot of our people, they've taken on the spirit of our enemies, and, and primarily Esau, Edom. This is why they walk around in pride, because they see Esau still in, in, in a position of safety. Right? So they take on that same spirit. This is why they don't want to hear the words of the Heavenly Father. This is why they're able to walk up and down here, head held high. You know what I'm saying? Because they think that they got it. You know, they think that they're in a position of safety, but they're going to find out. Uh, now, a couple of points that you said I wanted to uh, back up. Like one of them being the manifestation of these different uh, plagues and pestles that might come. A lot of that is going to be because of the people that took the juice have now a compromised immune system where anything can make them sick. Right. right? And they took the juice because they depended on each or either. I mean, Esau, you know, they depended and trusted in God the future. All right, but this is Sirach chapter 40, starting at verse 28. My son, leave not a beggar's life, for it is better to die than to beg. And a lot of you, two-thirds of our people are going to turn into beggars when Esau, you know, cuts off that supply. You mentioned that this is going to be the true essence of freedom when Esau, you know, cuts off all supply off the gate. All right, so they're going to become beggars once they have that hand is taken away from them. Verse 29. The life of him that dependeth on another man's table is not to be counted for a life. For he polluted himself with other men's meat, but a wise man well nurtured will beware thereof. Right? They beg for jobs, they beg for uh to go to go to clubs and bars, so they took the juice. Now the juice of uh Slavia. Uh sorry, 40 is 29 again. The life of him that dependeth on another man's table is not to be counted for a life, for he polluted himself with another man's meat. Right? They pollute themselves with their juice, man. Now people are walking out here polluted, man, getting sick from 
all type of random shit. They don't know what the cause is. Back to Isaiah chapter 30, the trust of Egypt has became their shame, man. Uh, that's really all I'm talking about. That's the sake of our people, too, because uh, that's, a, that's, that, that's why we say that we don't have no life. Yep, yep, yep. We just, we just, uh, we just, uh, exist. Yep. 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 Everything that we need and want, we got to go to another man. Yep. And 74 says, Hear ye, my beloved. Hear ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble I have are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the most high is your God. Right. Be, be not afraid, neither doubt, man. For the most high is your God, man. All right, and we often say, man, that. You know, it, it, we're, we're, we're thankful that the Heavenly Father has given us time, has given us this time of grace to get to know Him, to understand His judgment. You know? All right, because because uh, a lot of our people they're not going to have the ability to trust in the Lord. You know, but we we've exercised the law of statutes and commandments to the best of our ability. You know, we've been able to see the things that the Lord has done for us, man. How He has increased us, man. How He has changed us, man. That's that's that, that that's all a part of uh, our faith, man. That's all a part of trusting the Heavenly Father. A lot of these people, they don't trust the Heavenly Father, all right? And they're going to be found out in that time, all right? Because when when that when, uh, martial law hits, when, when they when they start cutting off the food and water, all right? You're going to start to see a lot of our people, they don't trust the Lord, all right? They put their trust in men, you know? But we put our trust in the Heavenly Father, man, and we're going to stand upon the Lord, all right? Because when that time comes, man, we, 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 we have faith that the Lord is going to take care of us, man, okay? So Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 22, and he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. All right, take no thought for your life, man. You know, when, when all hell breaks loose, man, that's it. We put our hands up, man, and we give all praise to you, Allah, we thank him, and we leave it in his hands, man. All right, we put our trust that the Lord is going to take care of us, man. The Lord is not unrighteous to forget our labor of love, man. Our works and our labor of love. He's not unrighteous, man. All right, we're going to stand upon that, man. We're going to stand. We're going to think upon all the things that the Lord has done for us, man. While the rest of our people, they're going to think about how wicked they've been, you know? How rebellious they've been, you know, towards the heavenly Father and not seeking him. All right, they're going to call upon, the, they're going to call upon another God, man. You know what I'm saying? They're going to call upon the name that they learned in these churches. And that's not the name of the Heavenly Father. All right, you said these pastors, they go to these so-called colleges, man. All right, they learn all these things, man. You know, a lot of our people, uh, uh, the majority of our people that are in society, they, they've been to college. So you saying that the Lord spoke English? The Lord didn't speak English. The Lord spoke Hebrew. Why don't you know that? That's that sleight of hand that our enemies have done amongst the minds of our people. 
you, you know, don't read. They don't read. You know, you went to college and you learned all these things and you still call him the Heavenly Father, you still call him the Son, Jesus? Don't you know that there was no J at that time? Why are you calling his name Jesus? Now, that's not his name. You truly showing how unintelligent you are. I got a scripture. Whatever you finish. This is uh, Psalms 119 and uh, verse 97 through 99. It says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Though through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. You know, so hey, uh, ultimately, you know, this is uh, like the apostles say, we know more than the men of old because now the Lord has opened up the book. He's released the seal, so now we're able to understand these things. But even for your teachers in the world, you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, pastors, yo, yo, uh, yo, yo, teach, yo, professors. All of these people act like they know everything, but the Lord has made us to understand more than what they know. You see what I'm saying? How does he do that? He says his, his meditation, his, uh, his precepts, his law. That's how we're made to know. He says, I'm wiser than my enemies, man. You know how, uh, how when it comes down to um, the art of war, right? It's always better to have the upper hand on wisdom when it comes to your enemy. You see, like when you when you dealing with wars and you got some people who can attack from on top of the hill and who got to come from the bottom of the hill. The person at the top of the hill got the vantage point. They're the person who has the. Uh, so now, if you come from the bottom of the hill, you got to rethink your plan to try to use wisdom because you already lost the advantage. You see, so now through the Spirit, the Lord has made us wiser than our enemies. So we know where they're coming from. We know what angles they're trying to throw at us. The scriptures say, uh, um, let Satan get an advantage of us. We know all his devices. You see, we know the devices of Satan. We know he's coming with that, that see him. We know he's coming down with great wrath. We know he's about to uh, toot up with his uh, 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 military, man. We know he's about to come in like a flood, man. We know these things. So the Lord says we are made wiser than our enemies. All these people who don't have the wisdom to be stronger than their enemies, the enemies are going to prevail over them. Esau, Edom's going to get the best of you. You see what I'm saying? It's, it, and that's, even at these stores, your enemies still getting the best of you, man. You know? I told y'all about my boy who came down here. What's going on, brother? My, uh, my boy who came down here uh, uh, get, got mad that the Edomite didn't speak back to him. When you're wiser than your enemies, you should, hey, you, you shouldn't expect them to speak back to him, man. Right. You see? Because now you know who they are through these scriptures. Right, Hebrews 4 and 12 tells us that we can intent to the heart and discernment, man. You see, so now we can discern the minds of our enemies and how they act, the things they do. The scriptures say, never trust thine enemy, man. Now, now that's a lesson that you only can learn from the Bible. You see, because even the military don't tell you who all your enemies are. The military will form the enemy that they want you to fight. But the Lord says, if you're not of the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, they're your enemy. Point blank, period. You see, so the two, even two thirds of our people are enemies. Now, we, now with some people out here that we can walk in the spirit and be like, hey, yo, we see the spirits upon them, right? Without them understanding the Bible. But that is different from a straight up two thirds spirit. The Lord gave you wisdom to understand the difference. And that's funny because based on how Esau uh, painted a picture of, uh, of uh, Ishmael, that's how we know, that's how Esau's gonna come for, 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 for the men of the Lord. Because they were even in the world, when you were walking amongst an Elamite, you know, you 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 kind of were like, you, you was like, you know, you thought of him as how, how as how uh Esau had painted the picture of him. Right? You'll see somebody wearing a, a a garment, you know, you'll see a woman with her head covered, and you would think some kind of way. And then you, yeah, you would think of like there's some kind of terrorist. Alright? But that, that but when you when the, when you repent and you return unto the Lord and you get a greater understanding of who you are and get a greater understanding of your enemies, you'd be like, well. That's not even a part of their culture, you know? But now we have that understanding. But how much more when it comes to the men of the Lord during that time, you know? So we can see that, we, 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 can, uh, we can see that left hand energy, that, that sleight of hand of our enemies, man. We see how Esau even works, man. Sirach. Uh, this is Sirach 19 and 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine to life. And they that do the things that are pleasing shall receive the fruits of the tree of immortality. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine to life, 
and they that do the things that please him shall receive the, the fruits of the tree of immortality. Just by simply keeping his ways, man. See, a lot of our people, they don't want to, uh, they don't want to uh, uh, abase themselves. They don't want to uh, be brought down low. All right, they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to establish humility. You know, but when you return to the Lord, you have to, you have to uh, be renewed. You have to become as a little child, man. You have to be willing to relearn the scriptures. You have to be willing, willing to relearn everything about the world that you live in. But our people, they're too prideful, and, they, and so they, they, they're not going to receive that understanding. You know, but that's a that's a part of it. You have to come. We have to return into the world with humility, man. You have to confess your faults. A lot of our people they don't want to confess them, their faults, man. They want to stick to what they've been taught to talk their whole life by their by these so-called churches. You know, but the Lord, His ways is plain, man. It's simple. It's not complicated, right? But when you when you interact with the other nations, when you interact with people in the world, you'll find out and you'll start to see the high level that the Heavenly Father has put you on. All right, don't look at don't look at the, the, the simplicity of the scriptures, man. You know, don't look at the simplicity of the ways and uh, 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 of, uh, of the laws of the Heavenly Father and think to yourself, oh, it's not going to help me and benefit me in the world. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. All right, because it's all it's all a part of the process of being reborn and being retaught, man. The Lord is building us back up, making us stronger, making us wiser. You know, removing those removing those lies out of our minds. By, by applying the ways of the Heavenly Father. This this Bible, this is what people don't understand about the Bible. People say the Bible has wise sayings. But the Bible literally will transform every aspect of your life. Right. That's what people don't understand, right? And, and even in the world, they call the Bible, they try to uh, break it down to uh, basic instructions before leaving earth, right? Now, they don't understand that, right? But at the end of the day, it has all of the truth that you need for whatever aspect you want in your life. When it comes to how to run your house, when it comes to how to deal with brothers, when it comes to the church, how to deal with your woman, when it comes to uh, uh, what you should eat, what you should eat. In every aspect, finances, every aspect of your life, you know what I'm saying? Every aspect of your life, it, uh, uh, it, even animals. Right. right, how to deal with your animals. The scriptures talk about a righteous man regards the life of his beast. You see what I'm saying? Everything, every aspect of your life, this Bible is here to help you transform it. And that's when you go into Romans 12 and 1 through 2, right? Conform to the, uh, 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 transform for the renewing of your mind. You see, once you renew your mind, that's when you can start working on the different elements of your life. You got something like Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old path, where is the good way, and walk therein. That's right, and where is the good way, and walk therein. But what do they say? Oh, uh, it says, and ye shall come rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Yep, that's what our people say. They say, we won't walk therein. We don't want to walk in the path, the way of the heavenly father and his son. Right, because that's not the way that, that's profitable for them. They want to walk in a way that the society has set up for them because the society allows you to be a complete rebel. It allows you to be whoever you want to be. Actually, can you read verse 15 as well? Jer Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall at the time that I that I visit them, they shall be cast down, said the Lord. You see, so this is what's going to happen for all of the people that don't want to walk in that way, right? They're going to be ashamed, you see? It, it, they, they, the, the mindset of these people, they don't, they, they, don't want, they don't feel the shame now. See, we felt the shame when we heard the word. So that's when we said, okay, hey, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. And we felt the shame that was come upon us. But these people, they rather commit abomination. They rather disagree with everything that we said and ultimately you're not disagreeing with us you're disagreeing with the heavenly father and his son because all we're doing is telling you the words that are written in this book the way the heavenly father intended them see that's the difference between your churches all right these mosques 
all of these different places, they don't tell you what the Heavenly Father wants and what he intends. You see? They only tell you what they want and what they intend. But when you read this Bible, the Heavenly Father is going to get your mind right so that you can serve him, so you can be saved from the damnation with which is those missiles, man. You got something, bro? No pictures, sis, please. Excuse me. No pictures, please. What y'all doing is against the law. All right. Have a, have a good day. Hey, have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day. You're going to get destroyed, but have a good day. Don't worry. Have a good day. Call yeah, call him up. Oh, call him up. Call your daddy. Yep. Call, call, call your daddy. Call your daddy. Esau eat him. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yep, she a demon. You see? But hey, this this is what people were talking about about gun violence and how they don't like gun violence in America. But the first thing women do when they have a problem is call nine one one. How you know you I'm see? not a man? That, that's what. Stephen, you, know, you, you probably are. You probably are. Yeah, you probably are. Son, that's the war, man. You see? See these, these demons out here. See, that's the problem with Babylon, man. You see, we're not even talking You recorded us first. You know what I'm saying? But look, this, this is the problem with this place. Our, our women, our women will call the police on us when our men, our men get shot down in the street. They have no problems with that. What crime are we What crime? Okay, what crime are we doing? What crime are we doing? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You said could, could, but we're not. You, oh, you're a right. You're a right. You're not worried about it. I'm not either. Call your daddy. Call your daddy. Keep smoking. Call your daddy. Keep smoking. 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 Keep being a demon. All right? That's all you got to do. That's the last two letters of my last name. It's H-E-L-L. Yeah, we know. We know. Hey, hey, give me John 8 and 44, man. That's a no man. Go ahead. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil. In the lust of your father, he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and a blood not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, but he is a liar and the father of it. That's right. She's a demon and a liar. See, we ain't say nothing to that lady. We weren't even saying nothing crazy. She the one up here talking about. But see, that's the problem. Our women are now our enemies, brothers. Our women, have, they have turned our women against us. Let her think. Let her think. Hey, see, the fact that she says I'm not, they have turned our people against us. You see? Let her take it. Let her take it. Let her take it. Let her take it. She got dreads in her head. We know she's dead. All right. She out here smoking blacks. You know, she she got she oh queen means whore. You are queen. The word queen means whore. Yep. You are yep. queen. Yep. Yep. Hey, and, 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 we are. You're the one, you're we the are. The, you're the one got the rainbow. Hey, the word. Hey, you're the one got the rainbow on your, hey, the, on your book bag. The word faggot means happy. Hey, and it also means bundle of sticks. Right. Did not the Lord say in Ezekiel 37, take the two sticks and make them in one to stick? So we are. We are a bundle of sticks. They, see, the people try to use these words, but they don't even know what they mean, man. You know, she a black African queen, man. Three terrible words. Three terrible words, man. God, let's get it, man. You know? See, this one, this, this one, the Lord said our people got to be destroyed. Right. You see? This one, I can't stand with This is Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9. Uh -huh. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Uh -huh. Hear my voice, ye careless daughter. Yep. Give ear unto my speech. Uh -huh. Many right days no years recording. shall ye be troubled, ye careless woman. Yep. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Yep. See, women, give me Micah 7 and 10. See, this, this, women like this are going to get trodden down in Jacob's trouble, man. You see? This, things like this are going to happen when, when martial law breaks loose. We're not going to have any mercy upon women like this, man. You see? Because we see now how our women are traitors, man. You see? A sighting of riot. You see, that's, that's, right that's a lie. That's a lie. We're not in sight. All we're doing, hey, and the thing is, the cops are going to come down here. They, we here every week. We know the cops. We got on camera. We know the cops. We know the cops. You know what I'm saying? They be down here, hey, what's going on, guys? They see us every week. You know what I'm saying? So all she's about to do is put herself in a basket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is Micah. This is Micah, chapter 7, verse 10. Then she that is my enemy shall see it, and the shame shall cover her, which said unto me, where is the Lord thy God? 
my eyes shall behold her. Now she shall be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Right, women like that are gonna get trodden down like the mire. We weren't doing nothing to that lady. We weren't bothering that lady. We weren't talking about women. She None of us got with us. You know, out of nowhere, it said we're inciting a riot. But if this was a gay pride parade, she would have been all for it. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Man. If this was an abortion, uh, abortion uh, rally, uh, rally, she would have been all for it. You see, but when it comes to prophesying this Bible, we're inciting a riot. It's because we're trying to save souls. Right? We're telling our people to repent, so we're inciting a riot. You see? And in the, the, the inciting a riot, well, you're the only one that's been uh, enticed out here. You know what I'm saying? Look, and this is why we need uh, Shai, man. This is why we need the Lord, because our women are completely out of order, man. They're completely out of order. This is Galatians, the fourth chapter, verse 16. It reads, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Man, you expose Eve, right? Man, you tell you the truth, Eve. Demons, you see more start coming out, man. And that's how people be, man. They be, they be cool, calm, but once you tell the truth, it's automatic. They become a demon, man. They don't want to hear the truth of this Bible, man. They want to continue hearing what Pastor Porkchop telling them in the churches, man. They want to continue on smoking them black and mild like it's going to save them, man. Because this is their kingdom right along. They're happy. This is their kingdom, man. And they see that their kingdom is falling, man. God. You know, even though their daughters of Jacob, man, they stand and they, they stick it up to Esau Eden, man, because they love the, they love the liberty that Esau even gives them, man. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want it to go away. They don't want to follow. They don't want to be under subjection underneath their husbands, underneath the men. They don't want to. <laughs> it's Isaiah chapter 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. We out here, peaceable, God. teaching the Bible. All the way learn black. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't none of us black. Read the scripture, Rock. Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. Brown. That put yeah, light for sweet and yeah. sweet for bitter. See? So Esau, he can be out here, you know, protesting for abortion. They, 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 they can be out here, gay pride much, marching down the street. And people going people to call that good. But when, when men are, so-called black men are teaching the Bible, all right, it's all it's our all own people that's coming up against us. You know, calling the police, man. That's why the Lord going to put Y'all wicked ass niggas to death. Yeah, right. I got you. Shabbat, why they else can pose? Cause they, they, they mad because we not out here. Oh, you gonna wait till they come back? You can't snitch and leave. Oh, you can't snitch and leave. There, you yeah. gotta wait for the result. Yeah, you do that. You, you get far away from us. Far away from us. I got, I got a Jeez, man. You see, they snitch and leave. They shit in the streets. She, she, she does what they do. They, they, she talk all of that mess and she got it. She running up out of here. You know what I'm saying? But then she said, they said, get away from y'all because the cops gonna say, like, yeah, we saw the lake. We, hey, we got it all on camera. You know what I'm saying? If you want to see it, officers, we got it all on camera. We was talking mad peaceful. What, what with all these cameras out here, man? And then the thing is, the only thing we said to her is like, hey, sis, no report. That's it. It's just went crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These cameras all over the place. The cops know us, man. They, we, they see us. They drive past every week. You know what I'm saying? We ain't in sight, though, right? Exactly. So even though scriptures do talk about how the, that it went down in the time of Acts. But we weren't even in that. We don't be coming in that spirit, really. We don't come in the spirit of intentionally yeah. incite riots. Now, sometimes yeah, yeah. spirits may be so subdued and cut to the point where they want to get rah-rah, but the scriptures say, be harmless as dove, but wise as serpents. Oh. And we are here to do a spiritual work. We ain't out here trying to fight. We ain't trying to get fights started. Now, now if y'all start scrapping, it, that's on y'all. You know what I'm saying? But that's not why we out here, man, and people don't want to understand it, you know? All she did is make that call, and she just marked herself with judgment. That's all she did, because the angels just heard that call that she made. Right. They wrote all that down. They said, uh, yeah, all day, this is what she was saying. <laughs> you know? So while, while she was in there calling the cops, reporting on us, the angels were reporting on her. <laughs> you got it, brother. Jeremiah, oh, you still No, I had nothing. Okay, let me give you the uh, Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21, yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed, how then art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Speaking about the, speaking about the people of our nation, man, men and women, and I want to go into the word degenerate in the Google, all right, it says having the physical, mental, or moral qualities 
could consider normal and desirable showing evidence of the plot. And that's what all people have done, man. All the characteristics of that, man. That woman was smoking a black and mild. Her shorts was right at the cusp of her cheeks. You see what I'm saying? She had dreads in her hair. She completely gone. You know, and then it's still trying to act like she, and that's the problem with this society. She said, how do you know I'm not a man? You could be. You see, that's the situation in the, in the lifestyle we're living in. I'll take that out. Unless you want it. Okay. But that's supposed, to, that's supposed to be our woman. So water in there? That's supposed to be the princesses of Israel, man. That, that woman ain't no woman. That's she a said queen. She said I'm a black African queen. That's a queen. That's a queen. That's a queen. So all of you women out there calling yourselves queens, you should stop immediately. Queen, when you go into the etymology of it, right, it goes back to being a harlot. You see? And that's how she is, you know? She's a, she's a spiritual and a physical harlot, man. You know she ain't serving the Lord. Yeah. Ain't no way. You know what I'm saying? We don't even know who her, her God is Satan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know a woman like that, her God is Satan. She going, and then she said the witchcraft thing, which is crazy because we don't believe in that at all. But so, as soon as, that's the thing. She, you will smoke a black and mild, but as soon as you see sage or incense come out, you think witchcraft. But that black and mild, the smoke coming from that black and mild is not witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? You, go, you get a black and mild, what, two for a dollar? You know what I'm saying? Hey, a dollar per mile? On the left hand side, they be smoking black and miles and they be doing their little rituals. Yeah. See? You know, black and mild. That's, that's exactly what she was. She was black and mild. You know, mild in the spirit, man. You know what I'm saying? Because spirit acts as be hot. She was black and mild in the spirit. We got it, brothers. This is Proverbs 9, verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. All that time, she never stopped talking. Once she started talking, she never stopped. And she was saying some foolish shit. She was calling the police. She was saying, oh, they're inciting a riot. They're doing witchcraft. She was saying, oh, what's bunch of clamorous shit. Her mouth could never stop talking. Got a quick read. This is John, the uh, 15 chapter, verse 18. And it reads, if the world if the world hated you, so like if the world hated you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have trust you out of the world, therefore the world hated you, right? So since we out here, we not we not speaking what she want to hear. She see the signs up. She see she see what we prophesying about. She became a demon, man. She she instantly hated us, man. That's how the world look at us. Since we not out here uh, prophesying uh, 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 peace and prosperity, living a long life in Babylon, Babylon being here forever. These people hate us, man. And she truly hated us because you know when when people offer or uh, threaten to call the police on you, <laughs> in their mind that's still constantly saying, "I'm gonna call somebody to come here and kill you." Right? And that's what the police are known for. They're known for killing the so-called black disciples in the They're known for that shit. So when people say, when, I, when, I, when I, another person says, I'm going to call the police on you, that's a threat of them trying to take your life, or at least at the bare minimum, take your freedom. You right? know that's our biggest enemy. Yeah, that's you know, right. You see, this thing. If, if those cops came out here and shot us all down, that would be our issue. But she would be happy. She would be happy about that. Yeah. But that's on our hands. You, all of us, just because you disagree with what we're doing, you see, but now it's giving these women liberty to just open their mouths and say something like that. But you will be on your hands, all those, you know, yeah, yeah, like, oh, good for them. You see what I'm saying? That That's that's terrible, the position that we're in, man. But I, I, I wanted to bring out that gun violence thing again. I was listening. I don't know who I was. Actually, I kind of know, but I'm going to keep his name on the list. Uh, Andrew Tate, no ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, got, he, got, he be saying some shit, some shit, some shit. Some shit. Some shit. <laughs> but anyway, he said, uh, he was like, this is how you know that people... Uh, say they're, they they uh, don't like guns and gun violence, but whenever they have an issue, they just call 911 to deal with it. So that lets you know that they really are about gun violence. They just don't want to be the one carrying out the bullet. Right, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that lets you know the mind of these people. I want you to see. Look, look. Look. They go to <laughs> what is wrong? Oh. Mega demon. Mega demon. Hey, I got a quick piece. Slump you got now. it, brother. But the Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, the wicked flee when no man pursueth the righteous that go down the line, man. That's what we get out of here, man. The Spirit of the Lord, man. You know, we're not, you know, unless the Lord moves us, we're not moving nowhere, man. We're going to keep rebuking these demons, rebuking these fleshly, carnal ass people, and stand bold as a lion. Although we're sheep in the Bible, the Lord got that spirit of the, you know, the lion upon us, man. But see, you know, the Lord is going to protect us, man. The Lord is going to protect us, brothers, because we're out here doing the work of the Heavenly Father. We're not out here to put our hands on people. We're not out here to fight you. We're out here to fight for the Lord on his behalf. And he's a spiritual being, right? So we're using uh, 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 the one that says uh, his, his sword is, his chariot is spirit, something like that. But the, their, their flesh are, uh, are men. Isaiah. 
think y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, if somebody can find us, also give me uh, uh, Romans 8. Give me Romans 8, bro. Isaiah 31 and 3. Yeah, read that for me real quick, brother. Isaiah 31 and 3. Now the Egyptians are men yeah. and not Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. And their horses flesh and not spirit. Yeah. And see that when we dealing with the Lord, he is a spirit. You know, he does with the things of the spirit. But everything of them is of the flesh. And see, that's why she think everything okay. You see, that, that the Lord has given you an example of what when martial law takes place, and you can't call 911. You can't call the cops. You can't call the ambulance. You can't get somebody in Instacart and deliver you some, some medicine, right? When all of those things are gone away, who are you going to call on, man? Who is going to be your call? Who are you going to pick up your phone to then? But we have a spiritual connection with the Heavenly Father where we can call him any time of the day. Any time of the night, we can call our power source. We can call the protector that's serving us, man. But they are a flesh. And that's why instantly, as soon as she had a fleshly problem, she called fleshly men to come save her for it. Okay, uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 7. For what nation is there so great who hath the most high so nigh unto them as the Lord Yahweh Bashmael Shai? Our power is in all things that we call upon him for. Woo! He's in all things that we call upon him for, man. So every time we, we run into situations, the Heavenly Father is going to be there to preserve us. He's going to be there to keep us. He's going to be there to save us, man. But these people are not, when, when that martial law comes, man, it's going to be really grievous to a lot of these people. When they tell you to stay in your homes and they pull pulling out guns and it's an EMP and you can't call 911, the cops ain't going to come save you. The cops are going to be trying to save themselves. Who going to help you then, man? You going to call on the Heavenly Father and His Son and then half of y'all don't even know His name. Y'all saying Jesus, but the letter J didn't even exist at that time, man. You see? So this is why you got to search now. Isaiah the 55th chapter says, seek him while he's near, man. Because soon his spirit of mercy is only going to be upon his elect and nobody else. Go ahead and grab that, brother. Uh, eight and uh, four. All right, this is Romans uh, five. five. This is Romans chapter eight, verse five. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. You see that? They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You know, and I, I, I wish I could remember what we were talking about when she first walked up. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't even think we were saying nothing like off the top. You know, we weren't even going into nothing crazy at that point. You see, but we're inciting, she said we're inciting riots only because the Bible is a, 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 is a, a controversial book. It's a controversial book. So whenever people face controversy in these times, they, the way they solve it is to call on Massa. You see? The Lord has a controversy. You learn about the, the controversy of the Bible. The Lord got a controversy with you. You got it, brother. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soda of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. you no, know, so like the brother said, hey, the, the scripture, the words that are in the Bible are powerful, man. So like, we weren't even going into anything, you know, that could be offensive to her, but she got offended, man. She you saw know? the signs. Yes, she was. She was looking at the signs. The signs are what got her. And over there, we got a picture of the uh, MOTB. We got a picture of the Lord, all right, a, dis a depiction of the Lord. We got a, a poster. That says, um, it talks about, uh, what's that, J Robert F. Kennedy's statement? Yeah, if you want to go ahead and put it on the cap. It says, but suppose God is black. But suppose God is black. What if we go to heaven and we all our lives have treated the Negro as inferior? And the Most High is there and we look up and he is not white. What then is our response? You see? So she see these signs and she gets bent out of shape. You see? But this, that lets you know that. She didn't even have to hear the words that we talk about. But our people are naturally against us, man. Naturally against their own men, man. Right? We were uh, uh, we were all Edomites out here, right? With Bibles in our hands. She was like, hey, guys, what's going on? How's it going? Good work. Man. Good work. God bless. Good. Amen, you guys. Man, could you imagine her husband in the hell that he catches? She ain't got no husband. She got no husband. Yeah. She, 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 no she, she got a dude that's every, every now and then. Off that hand dog. She, she, she got, got many husbands. Many husbands. Yeah, she, she ain't got no husband. She, ain't no way a woman like that can keep a man. Right. Ain't no way. Because uh, she's the type of woman that eventually, a man is, every man is going to get fed up with that. Every man is going to get fed up with that. Oh, go ahead. Are you going to do this?
Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29, is not my word like as a fire, yep. said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Mm -hmm. So ain't nothing to come against these words. When people hear the word that's coming out of these scriptures, they get offended, man. Yep. What's that other one? Jeremiah 5? Uh, people would? Yeah, yeah, Jeremiah 5, almost like 15, uh, somewhere in there. Can I, I, can bring out yeah, real quick. Quick. I just wanted to bring out this precept real quick because we're not out here inside in a riot. You know, we're out here to warn our people, man, to tell our men, you know, and daughters to get themselves together, man. We're warning them, man. Through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, man. We're giving them warning from the Heavenly Father, man. We're not out here trying to, our purpose is not here to incite a riot, man. We're out here bringing the gospel, which is the good news, man. This is Matthew 5, verse 9, and it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall, for they shall be called the children of the Most High. And that's what we're peacemakers, man. You know, we're, 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 we're bringing peace into our people, you know, by bringing out the words of the Heavenly Father so that they may be comforted, all right, to get themselves together so they don't have to uh, uh, receive that judgment, man, the ultimate judgment of the nuclear missiles, of the nuclear fire. You don't want no part of that. You want that You want that hedge of protection during the time of Jacob's trouble, man. All we're telling our, all we're telling our young men not to sell drugs, all right, to, to, lift, to put, lift up your pants, man. Stop killing one another. That's the message that we bring out. Tell them that you're the princes of the heavenly father. All right, that the kingdom of heaven is for you. We're, we're the peacemakers. But the scripture says in verse 10, it says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And that's what's happening, man. A lot of these people, they're, they're bringing up all kind of lies against us, man. For, for no for no reason, man. We, we, we could, she could have she could have been edified if she would have just sat here and listened, man. She would have knew that she was a, a daughter of the heavenly Father, and she and she would have knew that she, the kingdom of heaven is for her, you know. But she was too far gone, man. A demon, you know, open, uh, uh, is, is, is she's demon filled. Yep. She's two thirds, man. Hey, and mass persecution <laughs> is coming. All the large was killed in that, man. Come. Imagine when that famine yeah, breaks up. Pestilence breaks up. Anarchy breaks up. All the people are going to do what? They're going to blame the prophets, man. So that just shows you that a larger mass persecution is coming, man. And it's going to be our people, man. They're going to look bugged out. They're going to think we bugged out. We're going to look at them like they bugged out. Like, yo, all we did was warn you, man. All we did through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemesh, I'll tell you to get yourself together, man. You know, come in order, man. So the Lord, so Lord may protect you and shield you. That's all we're saying, man. They are of their father, the devil. The lust of their father, what they do, man. That's the spirit that she came in, man. Esau, Edom, man. She want to continue in her liberty, man. She want to continue to abuse her flesh, man. She want to continue to smoke black and miles, man. When the heavenly father, man, she, oh, she was through, man. But she loved this place. She Some, loves it, man. Somehow, some way. She looked through and destroyed it. She did. She look like that, but she loves this place. She wanna go out She getting child support. She getting wig. She getting housing. She don't wanna leave, man. Section eight. Section eight, man. She loves this place, man. Two dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? Two dollars a month, man. Hey, woman like that, you just know the box smell like a drug yard. Yeah, I don't want it. No, you just know it, bro. You know, she got too many demons manifesting in her, bro. Loose. Smell like the bottom of the ocean over there. For real, man. Take no one, don't parts. <laughs> but uh, we got that Jeremiah 5. Real quick, brothers. This is Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, thus said the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, because he speak this word, behold, I will make my way. Wait, hold on. He said what? Because he what? Because he speak this word. That's right. Go ahead. Behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this, and this people would, and it shall devour them. You see that? So the Lord said, because you speak my word, I'm going to make your words fire. And these people are going to be equated to wood, man, and it's going to burn. So she got cut. Something we said, it cut her and it offended her. And so now she's going to be, she's going to be, she's going to get literally burned up if she don't change her ways, bro. You see what I'm saying? And see, that's the thing. She didn't even get a chance to hear the word. So don't. That's what the scriptures talk about, them stopping their ears or they pulling the shoulder. She didn't even get a chance to hear what we were even talking about. You see, but you know, it probably could have had a situation. She's running to another camp somewhere and they, they cursed her out. You know what I'm saying? She automatically assumed we was the same people. Hurt. No matter what, she was hurt. But th that demon is trailing her everywhere that she goes instead of just trying to figure out what's, what's going on. But you got it. Uh, 
Matthew chapter 18, beginning at 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. No, that's why you got to be careful, you know, who and you time to start. Okay, because you don't know who's of the elect. No. Uh, verse 7, it reads, Woe unto the world because of, because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. You know, and that's why, you, that's why, that's why you, you got to treat, you know, uh, people that even people that you walk around in this world. Okay, they they, they not they might not be keeping the law, such commandments. You know, they might not. Uh, no, they might not be fully awoken to this truth. But hey, that's why you, that's why the scripture says be peaceable with all people. So you know, when you're in this world, you, you got to be. You know, you got to be circumspect. You know, you always got to be, uh, you always got to be in your mind that, hey, you know, this daughter right here, she could be a, she could be a part of the elect. You know, this man over here could be a part of the elect. You know, and that's why we treat everybody, you know, with the, with, with, with that respect. You know? and, and see, that's the thing. They don't be knowing who they be offending. These people be talking about us crazy, man. Call us all types of names, man. You know, but that's, that's okay, man. That's all right, because you're going to get yours. But see, look, but I'm not saying they're not still going to come. But see, two cops came. They're down there sitting in the car. They chill. They hear all the time. They hear all the time. They already know. That's why they just told her, just get away. You see what I'm saying? But that's what we told. That's the first thing we said. As, as soon as uh, we asked her, we said, no recording, please. She was like, oh, y'all, uh, I'm going to call the cop. We said, okay, have a, have a good day. That's the first thing we said to her, man. You see what I'm saying? But see, now the, the cops already knew what was up. You know, so they, they went on about their day, man. Uh, give me, what's that, uh, Matthew 25 and 5? That's why they didn't come in a rush. They, they know we out here. They know what's up, bro. Yeah, right. They're like, who? Oh, just go away. Just go yeah, away. just go away. They told them to walk away. Yeah, yeah. They'd be like, stay at the scene so they can understand. Yeah. Yeah. They told them to walk away. Just walk away. They know we out here. Yeah. They already know what's up. Hey, what's hey, going on, y'all? Oh, like, like, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, remember? I forgot his name. Sergeant Bullard? That was his name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you got that call. Y'all got a problem? Hit me up. Come call me. He ain't for the call on you, man. Yeah, right. We had to call you. Appreciate the plug. Right. <laughs> we call on the Heavenly Father. Yeah. He, he, he got uh, it. Sorry, uh, man. I think that's it. Matthew 25 and 5. I think that's the verse I'm looking for. But see, that's the thing. We, The Lord showed us how to walk that's in wisdom. Uh, uh, no, that's not it. Uh, I'm tripping. Matthew. Uh, uh, the one about agreeing with your adversary. Oh, agree with our adversary quickly. Yeah, yeah. what, what verse? Matthew 5 and 5. Five and twenty-five. I said twenty-five and five. Okay. Let's. This is Matthew chapter five, verse twenty-five. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast in the prison. That's right. You see, this is why. This is. This, see, that's another thing. These people are to show you the, uh, the world. Don't show you how to act. When it comes to Yahweh Shah, when it comes to uh, police officers and forces, they don't show you how to react to them. You see, but the Lord says, agree with thine adversary quickly, man. You see, so we, hey, how you doing? You know, you talk to a piece of, but you get Jay that, that'll come out here riled up. Oh, why you doing this? Why you doing that? But hey, man, just agree with them. So they be like, hey, man, we just out here reading the Bible. You know, sometimes people get offended at some of the things we say. But hey, man, they be like, all right, hey, we know you guys are out here. All right, go ahead and do your thing. You see? But Jake in the world, Jake was when Black Panther was out here, they'll be out here suited and booted with guns, you know, telling them, back up, white man. You know what I'm saying? That to them, they're they going to get kicked off the block and they're going to get arrested. He said they're going to deliver you to the judge and then you're going to go, what is it? Deliver after the judge. What happened? Then, uh, to the prison? To the officer. To the officer. Then be cast in the prison. And then be cast in the prison, man. So you don't want to, that's it. Man, going through the court system is bad. I don't give a damn if it's just a fucking ticket, bro. You don't not want to do that. Even going to the court for a ticket will vex you, man. You gotta, pay, you know, you gotta pay fucking court costs just because you got a ticket and plan on going in. You gotta pay court costs. So if your, say for your ticket was a hundred dollars, right, for a parking ticket, if you want to dispute it, and you go to court, and they decide that you gotta pay that hundred dollar ticket. They probably gonna charge you like twenty dollars for court fine too. Thirty dollar fine. You know what hey, man, what I had you? a yeah. ticket. I had a ticket the other day. I went to ticket clinic. I paid them like eighty to go to court for me. Court fees was like two sixty. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It was one of the tickets. You better. I'm like, I'm just paying the eighty. Yeah. You know what I'm and saying? They gonna put points on it. Like yeah. That's what I'm saying. Them, them ticket clinics don't always be helpful. Bro, okay. Just a little side note for it. A lot of times, uh, well, not parking tickets per se, but speeding tickets. 
All right, you uh, you typically huh? want to go to the uh the court instead of paying it outright. Because if you go to court, if the officer that pulled you over not there, they're gonna dismiss, they're gonna dismiss it. it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But obviously you gotta take time off work, whatever you gotta do. But you got a better chance of you just do that out instead of just paying. It. You know what I'm saying? But you know it's all up to the Lord, man. But yeah, they they'll catch you like that. Two hundred sixty dollars in court fines, bro. bro what what? does that even mean? That's what he had. To, you know the judge had to go up and just sit down like yep. I'm with two yep. sixty just because I had to pull up today. Just a, a <laughs> standard two sixty fee, man. man. This is this this is a place of unrighteous decrees, man. That's what we're seeing here in Babylon, man. But the Lord still got us saying, hey, agree with them, so you, you they, they won't give you any problems. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. The Lord said, if this is my kingdom, my service will fight. But see, we don't we don't gotta, we fighting for our salvation. We ain't gotta fist fight for our lives every day we out here. But the time of Jacob's trouble gonna come, you might be fighting for your life, but if the Lord give you those spiritual powers to fight against the, the powers that be, you're gonna be all right, man. Uh, you have some kids. Uh, this is Romans chapter 13, verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. So we're, we're, we're actually we're going to the opposite of what she's claiming that the devil is. Right, we're, not, we're not in that rioting spirit. And verse 14 it says, Put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill to fulfill the lusts thereof. You know, because we, we wanted to go say but they didn't want to like put hands on her, but we, 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 we wanted to sometimes. Stone. You know, we, we can't make provision to the flesh. We can't give it to the flesh. We got to stay in the spirit. Right. Just like Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah, man, that's, that's the heavenly father's only begotten son. He had the, he had the power to uh, to uh, to not be crucified, man. But he had he had to go through it, man, because he was staying in the spirit in order to fulfill prophecy. Right. And, and, and inciting riots, man. Like, come on, man. Like, that's not, that's what the nigga wants. You see 13, I don't mean, she counted up. Uh, she says 13 is 12. And then she still come up on us. Uh, how dare you? Yeah. And then, then gonna say, hey, you know, they, they're all black. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's low key. Like, that's disrespectful, man. First of all, ain't none of us black. But hey, you know, there's native brothers up here, man. You know what I'm saying? There's Northern Kingdom up here too, man. He's just calling everybody black, man. You know, but Southern Kingdom ain't black either, man. You know, so that's disrespectful. Yeah, they all black. But like, oh, you want 12 black guys, you gotta go down there. They ain't talking about that. That was some other guys. You know what I'm saying? But what you got, my son? This is, uh, you know, in uh, Romans 13 and 1, it says, let every soul be subject unto the high power, for there is no power but of the most high, the powers that be are ordained of the most high. And I just want to drop down to three. It says, for the rulers are not a terror of good works, but of evil works. And we're doing good works. That's right. Well, thou then not be afraid of the power to do that which good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. That's right. We're, we're trying to do good works. And that's how you're going to receive praise from the Heavenly Father, man. You, you know, bro, there's no way we'll be out here. Be, the apostles won't be out there that many times for years if they were picking fights, literally. You see what I'm saying? If, if we would have put our hands on that woman, it would have been over. It would have been over for us. Hey, shit would have been in the news. You know what I'm saying? Hebrew Israelites downtown. Hit, hit, a, hit a black queen. You know what I'm saying? It would have been, been all bad, man. You see what I'm saying? I know exactly how to talk about it. I'm like, black woman uh, attack. By radical, yep. Black <laughs> That's how they would have written. You know they got to be right, please. By black radical Hebrew Israelites. That's how it would have went down. That thing too, man. You see how, like, how she was basically demonizing. She was standing still. We ain't doing shit. She's like, yeah, then it's time to rise with you. So that's just going to show you how these devils going to be uh, demonizing, demonizing, demonizing us in these times to come. Yeah. She, the cops knew she was lying. Come. You know what I'm saying? They out here inciting the riot. They know she lying because they know we don't do that. We can never be. They know we wouldn't be doing it. But she, real talk, she was the one inciting stuff. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? She was the one saying stuff, calling people out of their names, getting all this kind of getting everybody riled up. That was her. That was the demon coming trying to sense, man. Sar Sergeant Bullard was like, nah. <laughs> don't don't go down there. They they good. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they good. You know what I'm saying? They know they know what we doing. They know we we stand in the same spot. You know, we ain't down here with music playing, jumping around. We stand in the same spot. 
right? Reading the Bible, man. So we know you just, they just know she got offended. That's all. They get them caught. Hey, that's beautiful now, cause they get the call and they not even coming. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. They already know. Gas? What they hell no. Nah. Yep, they used to get wow. right, gas prices. While she was on the phone, you saw that Corey had a camera somewhere watching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. 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 Hey, shit, I'm, they got the live. Yeah. They right. could probably just yeah. tune yeah. in right. and see what's right. going on. Right. 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 They got the page. Right. You know? Okay. Go ahead, you got it, bro. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, for we, for we, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of all warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of the stronghold. So we got all the power of weapons, and that's this war, man. All right. So we ain't going to put some hands on people. We ain't going to do that because that's not the time, man. All right. So all weapons that we have right now is dispersing. All right. And we have to use them accordingly. Not to be Bible blue, not to be out here as a bad man. We just have to preach the gospel. We take our whole home back uh, I'm going to go to the book of uh, Titus, chapter 3, verse 1. It says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates to be ready to every good work. You see? So that's the type of spirit we ought to be in, man, to obey magistrates and powers and principalities. So that's just backing up what the brother brought up earlier, that Romans 13, man. Okay? So we got to be subject to the laws of the land. All right? And then this is uh, Romans 2, uh, and until it contradicts the law of the most high, you know what I'm saying? And that's a different story. And I'm speaking more so about the MOTV, you know, because that's going to be a law of the land when it's time for the MOTV to get implemented. But the most high told us not to do that, so we're not going to do it. Y'all about to try about this up. All right, this is uh, Romans 2, starting at verse 6. Who will, when, who will render to every man according to his deeds? Let's talk about the most high. Everybody's going to get according to their works, man. All right, so if you kept sowing evil works in this earth, you're going to get an evil recompense, and vice versa. You sow righteousness, you're going to get a righteous recompense. Verse 7, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So that's for the elect, all right? Who are patient in continuing in these righteous works, right? They're going to inherit eternal life. Verse 8, but to them that are contentious, like that lady, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. So that's what's coming upon them. Tribulation, anguish, man, right? It says of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. So it's going to happen to those who are in the truth, who know that they're Jews, who know that they're Israelites. It's going to happen to our people who are in a Gentile state of mind, okay? You got people in the truth who are doing wickedness, man, and they know it. You know, they know that Israel, see? Shit, you had a DC Young Fly the other day posted up a cigar. You know, he knows he's a like that. He said it in one of his interviews. But he probably still off in that world. Hey, then doing it with Sakari, man, you know, DC Young Fly, man, you know, look, at the end of the day, it's good that you know you're a Hebrew Israelite, like, but it's not good enough, man. But look, I, you know, I ain't trying to bang on Sakari, but bro, they going to lead you in the officer. right direction, brother. Mark you know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you, you got to you gotta find the truth, man. All right? And the whole truth, all right? I want to get this real quick because uh, we were talking about, you know, our blessing and what the Lord gave Esau the sword, man. The Lord didn't give Jake the sword to benefit us, right? Uh, and this this is uh, back in Genesis. Now, obviously, uh, this is when uh, Jacob thought he was blessing. Uh, I mean, Isaac thought he was blessing Esau, but it's was, it was still in the spirit that uh, Jacob was supposed to be the one to inherit the blessing, right? This is uh, Genesis 27. In verse uh, 27, I started 26, and it says, And his father Isaac said unto him, Come here now, come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore, the Most High, I will give thee of the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee, and curse thee everyone that curse thee, and bless it, he that blesses thee. So the Lord says, so this is a, a, a blessing that was given unto Jacob, man. All right? He said, curse everybody that curse, curse me to everybody that cursed you. So that lady was cursing us also, man. All right? She was saying bad things about this. Really, you know, obviously, this goes to all the 12 tribes. 
But in this lifetime, this is relating to the elect. You see? So everybody that cursed the true men of the Lord are going to be cursed, man. But everybody that blesses the men of the Lord are going to be blessed in these last days. So you got to understand what the Heavenly Father ordained for you. He ordained for our people the power that comes in understanding the Bible in its fullness. Not getting a gun. A gun is not going to save you in the times to come, man. I don't care how many bullets you got. I don't care if you got the uh, the biggest equipment going around. We know, Lord willing, we be those men. We might be out here smashing tanks. Which power you want? To smash a tank or be able to shoot a gun, man? That's not going to be profitable out of you, man. So you got to find out what the Heavenly Father requires of you and tap into your power source, your weapon, so you can be stronger than the other nations that are out here, man. All right, all right. Said uh, one people shall be stronger than the other, man. Right? Uh, really, the nation of Israel is the strongest nation when you have us on side back in the sun, man. Right? You know, because no one can stand before us when the Lord is with us, man. The Lord said, if we obey his voice, indeed, let's get a real quick. Exodus 23, and, uh, I'm going to straight to the point while I'm willing. Exodus 23, and verse. 23, from my angel, actually, verse 22, actually 23 and 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. You see? So if we obey the voice of Yahweh Shemashai and do all that the Lord commands, he's going to be an enemy unto our enemies, man. You know, and, and like the scripture says, Romans 8 chapter, if Yahweh Shemashai be for us, who can be against us, man? You know, Gamaliel said something as well. He said, uh, 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 pretty much he said, if this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of Yahweh Shemashai, you cannot overthrow it. Let's happily be found even to fight against the Most High. You know? And you ain't going to conquer the Most High, bro. So that's a battle you're going to always lose. Yeah? Quick bring it back, you want? This is Judah chapter 5, going straight to the point. Judah 5 and 21. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them. And their power be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. Even all the nations, even if the Lord was defending us, there's nothing they could do to stop us. There's no way they could ride against us, man. When the Lord is on our side, the, the, whole, the Lord is always on our side. But right now we're in captivity. But once the Lord is on our side, and he's defending us once again, it's game over for all the other nations. I'm sorry, I got another account in the book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 11. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel, and we're going down to the ground that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. There were none, there were more which died with the hailstones than they who died with the children of Israel through the swords. In other words, the Lord killed more of our enemies for us than we could have even done on our own. So it's like when the Lord backing us, which he does, which he is, but you know, when we're in righteousness, we're in the mountains. It's, it's, it's getting more blessed, brothers. Yeah, because ultimately sin. And transgression is what separates us from the power of the Most High. You know, uh, Isaiah 59 and 2 goes into that, okay? So when we when we go off, we get separated from that power, man. You know, that's why when you go off, you get you feel a little discouraged. You know, you might not, your faith might not be as strong because you know, like, damn, yeah, Jake just fucked up. I don't know if the Lord going, you know what I'm saying? But that's why you got to have faith still and know that, okay, y'all about to try to lock you up, messed up. But let me keep pushing, you know? Let me hold on to the faith because once you give up the faith completely, Satan won. That's right. Sin, hey, sin and uh, abomination, transgression, that's our kryptonite, man. You know what I'm saying? But what happens when you get further, when Superman gets further and further away from the kryptonite, he gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So, hey, just because uh, kryptonite that came, somebody threw a piece of kryptonite in Superman, don't mean he's going to stay that way. You know what I'm saying? But you, that's what I said. A righteous man falling down. I mean, a, a righteous man falls down, but you got to get back up, man. Right, righteous man falling seven times, but you got to get back up. And that seven goes into completion, man. So you're going to, some days you, you, you're just going to feel down. You're going to feel low. Right, but even days when you're sad and low, and this is the thing. Being, your emotions are no excuse for your uh, your transgressions. That's because the scriptures say in Ephesians, be angry but sin not. So your emotions are no excuse for you going off, man. You can't say, well, I'm sad, so I decided to smoke this blunt. <laughs> you can't say, well, I was angry, so I needed to cool down, so I went uh, uh, smoke 10 cigarettes. You, you being upset, angry, your emotions are no excuse 
for you disobeying the heavenly father. Right. You know? It says in Psalms 55 and 22, cast your burdens upon the Lord and That's he shall right. sustain thee. That, it also says, I believe in, uh, I know it says in Apocrypha, but it says, cast away the thought that is most heavy unto you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you got to lay that upon the Lord. And the Lord is going to take care of you. Amen. Ezekiel 13 and 30, or 18 and 30, Salakia. Ezekiel 18 and 30, therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his way, saith the Lord's power. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed, and make a you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? That's the point. The Lord said, turn away from transgressions that iniquity will feed out our ruin. That's our kryptonite. No? Yeah. Hey, also, we was reading Micah earlier. Micah 7 and 9 says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. So whatever you're doing wrong, it's really payback to the Lord. You see what I'm saying? It's like, hey, you know what I'm saying? About, 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 about every week I tell you, hey, bro, I owe you a dollar every week. Every week you're looking for that dollar, bro. You know what I'm saying? But then when you, when you, when you come up short, you like, damn. But the Lord is like, you got to go through what you're going through because you did him wrong in the first place. You got to deal with whatever is going on in your life because you went off. This, this, the scripture is saying, Hebrews 8, for the fault was with them. You see? So we're in debt to Yahweh Shai, man, for our sins alone. And then he paid that debt. So now we definitely indebted to try to present our bodies as a living sacrifice for the men and try to serve the Lord. And for you women out there, do best by your husbands. That's how you do best by your Howard Chanel Rashad, being the best uh, uh, aid and help me that you can to your husband. That's how you serve the Lord, you see? Because uh, a lot of our women, they'll say, well, if I can't go out and teach, what do I do? And you can you can follow the scriptures as the scriptures say, right? And you do right by your husband, right? As the scriptures say, uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord. That's your Lord, so you do the best by him. And that's how you got a better chance of salvation. Everybody got a role to play. Uh, when you read Daniel's the 12th chapter, uh, in the 13th verse, it says, in the last days, everybody's going to stand in their lots. Right? So you got to do it. You in the line, you believe the, the 1 Corinthians 14 and 32, it says that uh, the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. So all of the, the uh, all of you prophetesses out here, which are the wives of prophets, all right, you got to do right by your husband. You see, and that's what the Lord got a great reward for you. Uh, Ephesians 5 and 22, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Submit unto your husband, you know, as, as you do unto your house, that's your, that's your Because we submit ourselves to the Heavenly Father and the Son. You know what I'm saying? Because the Heavenly Father and the Son is considered our husband. You know, we serve him to the best of our ability, man. You know, a lot in, in all actuality, a lot of our daughters they have it easier than we do, man. But they'll complain and say that we have it easier. That's not true, because our lives are on the line when we're out here doing this work, man. You know, when we go out into the world, our lives are on the line, all right. But we put our trust in the heavenly Father, man. All right. And, and, and if you have a man of the Lord, you should you should uh, put your trust in the Lord through your man, through your husband. You know, like I said, we all we, we all gotta submit to somebody, huh? You know, we got to submit, you know, to uh, people that's, that's above us. We got to submit to the apostles. How many times you went? Uh, they already so we went twice already. Right. You only went once. You know, all they have to do is submit to their husband. You know? Yeah. I believe that the Lord is going to take care of you. When you continue on that Ephesians 5th chapter, it goes to tell the church is something that must be up for the wife that is subject to the husband. No, examine yourself, even it out. Whether he be in the faith, and that's what we got to do daily, man. Examining ourselves, because like, like I said, just because you feel sad, that doesn't give you the right to sin. Just because you're going through something, doesn't give you the right to go on. So every day you got to be examining yourself, like you just said. I'm reading again, Second like Corinthians chapter 13, verse five. Examine yourselves. Whether he be in the faith, prove your own selves. And when you're going through something, that's really that Yahweh Bashem al proving you. I believe in James, the first chapter, it speaks about it. I can grab that right quick. That's, that's, that's a beautiful thing, man. The Lord is teaching us how to 
uh, uh, be our own thing. Well, the Lord is our psychologist. You know, he's teaching us to examine ourselves. Like It's like, okay, uh, are you committing any sin uh, knowingly or willingly? Nah. Are you keeping the commandments to the best of your ability? Cut. You know, am I going out on highways and byways? Cut. Am I committing adultery? No. Am I studying? Cut. So that's, that's that comfort that the scriptures that the Lord gives us, man, when we constantly examine ourselves. And if we know we're not, we'll say constantly reading. Like, I, as a, I, I have to pray more. You know, I've been examining that about myself, so I have to pray more. You know, even though I pray, but I need to pray more. You know, I need to study more. You know, but that's that's just uh, uh, examining ourselves, man. And we don't, we don't have to cast ourselves down in the council of our minds. And you say that because it, it should be every day a spiritual check mark. Right. Am I doing this? Right. Did I do this? Right. Did I do that? Right. That's, that's what you said to yourself. And I want to grab James the first chapter right quick. This is James chapter 1 verse 3. And it says, knowing this, that the try that, that the trying of your faith work in patience. You see, so when you go through things in your day-to-day, -day, being brought to a lower state, that's all you being tried. That's all you being proved. That's all you, you know, you prove yourself. All right, so uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 13, verse 5, again, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own self, how that and how a son of Mashiach is in you, except ye be reprobate. See, when you go into the word reprobate, it goes into the word reject. All right, in verse 6, and it says, but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobate, man. So we're not reprobate, but it all goes back into examining yourself, man. You know? I got a precept. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You know, and, you know, each and every brother is suffering. You know, and that's that's a part of that's a part of our trial. But you know, instead of being in that woe is me spirit, you know, you, you gotta you gotta con you gotta um, counteract that negative thought to a positive thought. Yeah, I'm suffering now, but in the, in the latter end. I'm gonna get a reward for this, okay? The Lord says, "I um, this work that we're doing is not in vain." So, yeah, you wake up, you know, we 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 we, don't, we feel like shit. We in this flesh, you know, but we we have a reward, you know, and that's what we fighting for, you know. Even if you go back into the world, you still got to deal with, you still got to deal with that, you know. So, hey, you got to keep pressing towards the mark. Yep. 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 God. Yeah, because the scripture says in uh, uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 12, fight the good fight of faith. So this is a, a spiritual fight. So when Satan's throwing a punch, you got to be able to counteract it, you know, with with, 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 his, with the scripture. You know, just like Yahweh Shah in uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter, you know, how, how did he um, defeat uh, um, the spiritual demon Satan by the scriptures? You know, he was cutting, he was cutting Satan ass with the scriptures and that uh, it didn't, then Satan uh, fleed away, you know? I got that. Matthew chapter 4 verse 3 And when the tempter came to him He said If thou be the son of the most high Command that these stones be made bread But he answered and said It is written Man shall not live by bread alone But by every word that proceeds out of the heavenly father I think it's a little bit more on that Come. Verse 5 And the devil take, take the place up And took the holy city Tempted him again uh, And set it him upon the pinnacle of the temple And he said unto him if thou be the son of the most high, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. God, keep it's a little bit more on that. Uh, Yahweh Shah said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy power. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Come on, keep going. Him, uh, him being tempted yep, yep. Uh, verse 9, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Yahweh shall said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shalt thou serve. Come Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered. See, so that's that's how that's how you how was shot de defeated the spiritual demon Satan. See, so De Satan he was uh he was persistent. He, he he was he was constant, you know. So sometimes, you know, we might be having those battles and within our mind, you know, we just 
we just combating that with the scriptures, the scriptures, the scriptures. Then eventually, the the Satan gonna flee. You know. Yep. 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 I mean, that's the Lord trying you to see where you at. Yep. And that's a part, and that's a, that's a part of um, you know, walking walking in that path that you how was shy, you know. Uh, you got to talk at once. Yeah, this is uh, 2 Corinthians, the you know, fourth chapter, verse seventeen. It reads, "For a lot of affliction, which is but for a moment." Start at verse sixteen. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse sixteen. It reads, "For which cause we faint not." But though our outer man perish, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. Hey, that goes back to what we was talking about. Though our outer man perish, our inward man is being renewed day by day by the things we go through, trials and tribulations, uh, uh, demons coming on us, man. All right, all those things will be renewed, will be built it up for the times to come. Yep, and the Lord, you know, the Lord is uh, before before he, the Lord gives us those new bodies the, the lord is cleaning out our, our inward man first because right. we, we clean the lord's clean out the, the cup the inside of the cup first yep. you know because the outward man gonna stay here back yeah the outward man yeah 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 verse uh verse 17 second chapter verse 17 for a lot of affliction which is but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory while we look not in which are seen the things which are not seen are eternal. Right. right? So, you know, us having the battle demons, us having to catch him on this side, all the bullshit we got to go through, man, that's, that's just for a moment, man. Are we looking forward to, to the kingdom, man? Are we looking forward to the mortality, man? And the reward for the set of reward at the end of this nigga is, is, is great, man. Yep, yep. This far more than, than anything, you know, he was on this side. I mean, right. the car, he was on the side. All the things of this world, all the things that he was, he was just soon to be destroyed, man. Yep. The best thing to do is to do what the Lord requires you to do. Because at the end of the day, when you check all the boxes, yeah, I prayed, I read, I did my lessons. You know, when you when you when you complete all those tasks, you know, you feel good at the end of the day. You know. That resistance is more of yo. Know, that's more of um, the old man. That's yep. more of like you know, uh, 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 wanting to go back into the world. Right. You know, whenever I get that feeling of, 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 of that. Um, that just that resistance, then I know that's just like demons wanted me to go yep, back to something. Yep. So I have to constantly check myself, man. Yep. Because it's a good feeling to be in the spirit of the Lord, man. To know that you're serving the Lord to the best of your ability. Yep. And you're trying to hold on to that space yep. as much as you can. Yep. You know, we're not like the people in the world, man. They just like to like float with the wind, man. We're not gonna float with the wind, man. Go. All right, we're gonna stay upon this rock. Yeah, but what it say? Contend for the faith. Contend for the faith, man. Do contend is the fight. It is. It a is fight. It's a fight right here, man. Uh, the greatest fight that has ever been on the face of the earth, and we're gonna win this fight, man. And, 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 uh, the real fight you know, in the boxing is 15 rounds. Well, back then it was 15. I think now 12, it's 12. 12, man. 12 rounds, man. Three minute rounds. And when, and, and, and it's a spiritual fight. Every day you gotta fight. Yep. So we're gonna contend, man, every day. Yep. But we wanna get what after we wanna get the victory. And that's that build up, man. That's that build up. The more you the more you fight, the more your 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 your, your, your foundation is gonna become solid, man. Right. The more you grow. Yep. You know, because you're learning, you're learning about yourself. The more you fight, the more you contend with the demons and the, and the evil spirits, the more you're learning about yourself, man. So when when, the, when our enemies come for us, man, it's not it's not it's, it's not gonna be anything new. Another thing too, with 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 boxing, with fighting, mind you, three 
minutes of straight fighting, that's, 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 that's forever. That's, yeah. that's hardcore. They have to pace themselves. They have to condition themselves. Same thing with the truth, man. You can't jump straight to the, to the meat, man. You got to take the milk. You got to pace yourself. You got to build. You got to go. That way you can get through those 12 rounds. Right? Yep. Yep. You can't just jump straight into it and be like, yeah, I'm going to be able to, to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a world champ. Yep. You know, Gonna burn out. Yep. First round, one minute in, you, you, you Yep. The Lord gave every, every man they, they certain portion. So, you know, a brother might be able to, to push out three, four lessons a day. But if you try doing that, hey, that 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 might make you. You might grow weary, and he fall out the truth. You know. Very kind. First Corinthians chapter nine, starting at verse twenty-four. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain.
dope. Not only preaching these words, reading them, but you have to live it. Yep. Day to day, man. And the conduct that you gotta conduct, even when you on camera, off camera. Off camera right? yep. This is uh, First Peter, excuse me, Second Peter, one and uh, one and thirty. Verse four. Second Peter one and thirty. It says, uh, "Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust." And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brother, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yahweh Shahmashkar. So when you get those things, you're not barren in the knowledge of the Lord. But these people are barren in those things. They're barren in uh, faith. They're barren in virtue. They're barren in knowledge. They're barren in self-control, which is temperance. They're barren in patience. They're barren in godliness, man. You know, and it, it, it's what does a woman want? A woman doesn't want a barren womb. So we don't want our faith and our knowledge of the Lord to be barren. You see, I got one more verse, brother. You got it. It says, uh, actually, I got two. I can't not get that one. It says, but he that lacketh these things is blind. And cannot see far off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you, you shall, shall never, never fail. fail. Man. So if we do these things that the Lord requires of us, we're not going to fall. We keep those things, that brotherly kindness, that charity, that temperance, that patience, that godliness. If you keep those things, you're not going to fail, brothers. You see what I'm saying? you got to stay diligent in this thing to make your calling and your election sure, man. Ain't nothing better, and I we haven't even experienced it yet, but I know for a fact that nothing is better than being saved by your house shot on judgment day. That's right. Nothing, nothing else that this lifestyle can offer you is better than that, man. Yeah, because nothing's going to matter. You know, you have the Rolls Royce, you have the Bentleys and the fine holes and nice clothes. What's that going to matter when it's burning up in the missiles? That's right. That's the scripture right. says, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved. What matter? What matter of persons are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And those are those traits that the brother brought up. You know, brotherly kindness, charity, virtue. Those are all a be a part of Yahweh Shemeshah's divine nature. Yeah. It's divine to be brotherly. It's That's divine right. to be, you know, charitable, to have virtue, to have the knowledge, temperance. Those are all godlike traits, man. That's right. You know? So if we continue to do these things, we're not going to be unfruitful. And Yahweh Shemesh doesn't want us to be unfruitful. John the 15th chapter says, John 15 and uh, verse 7, uh, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Here does my Father glorify that you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Man. So we glorify the Yahweh Shemesh when we put on those divine traits like the Brother Graham to make us fruitful. That's right. This is Psalm chapter 101 and verse 2. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Behaving ourselves wisely, man. And there's no wiser way you can behave yourself than to put on what the scriptures tell you to put on, man. You know, like it says, oh, when will thou come unto me? Like we read in uh, Genesis 49, you know, Jacob said to the Most High, I have long, uh, I have long for thy salvation. Right, prepare for it, man. That was back in Genesis. He knew that Yahushua was going to come back gathering his elect. Jacob knew that, man. And our forefathers knew that, okay? Because when you read Genesis 49, it said, Gather yourselves, ye sons of Jacob, that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days, man. So he knew about the last days. And the last days began when Yahushua, technically, when John the Baptist, Yahushua first came on the scene. Okay, that was when the last days began. Because you got people who say, oh, you've been saying we're in the last days. We've been in the last days for thousands of years. Yep. Okay? And that's also a misunderstanding of what a day is, too. Yep, yep. You see what I'm saying? They hear last days. They think that's coming next week. Yep. You see what I'm saying? But lastly, we are, the Lord even said, this, his day is as a thousand. Yep. You see what I'm saying? A day up there is like a thousand out here. But see, when people hear last days, they expect it to be an overnight process. Where he at? Where's the promise of his coming? Well, he promised that he was going to come. And that's the spirit, because I was meditating that the, on that this morning, man. I was thinking, man, like, this. you notice the generation that Yahweh Shah is coming back, bro. It's, it's too much going on. It's too much spirit, too many spiritual things taking place 
but it's not to be it, man. Yep. You see, uh, the men, the, the men on the highways and byways is the greatest sign. But you're seeing Babylon, uh, Babylon. You're seeing Sodom and Gomorrah. You're seeing uh, women raised up to an ungodly level. You're seeing Esau acting proud. All of the, everything that's written in this book is is prophesied, and so now you can see it. You know, but just like we read, it says uh, you can see it. You know what I'm saying? You, the men, the men that are really about this, you can see it. But they looking for a vision that's far off, like Ezekiel, the 12th chapter says, man. But this got to be the generation that Yahweh Shah returns, man. You know, I leave it up to these people. They want us to just, they want us to die out. They don't want to see us again. They want something bad to happen to us. But hey, man, the Lord is going to come back, man. He's on his way, and he's showing us time and time again. You're saying some of the chariot uh, reveals and the animal reveals in the ocean like you've never seen before, man. You know, it, it, the Lord got to be coming back, man. He's showing you that he's coming back. But these people are blind. It says they are blind and they can't see a far off. These people are blinded to the reality that is what's going on in their society. That's because they're too involved with uh, social media. They're too involved with what's going on on their damn TVs. All right. He's only gave you a thousand distractions in the world. But the Lord gave you the truth. But they said, no, nah, we good. See, the, 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 the unbelievers of the world, they'll say, Oh, uh, Esau even the reason why there's a uh, global warming. Oh, he's using the heart and, uh, and, and yeah. Global warming. Global warming. You know what I'm saying? But that's all the will of the Heavenly Father. The Most High declared the end from the beginning. So the Lord knows, man, by them increasing the heat that's upon the earth, there that is changing the uh, the environments, the ecosystems of, of a lot of the uh, it's waking up a lot of the, the the creatures that are hidden, man, and forcing them to move out of their place, man. Now, now they're starting to come up to surface, man. So we're gonna start to see a lot of these animals that we haven't seen maybe in, in thousands of years, man. Yeah. They're gonna start to show themselves. I showed the brothers a video that was sent to me. Uh, these two huge uh, sea creatures. All right, these two huge sea creatures that were in the water. One of them looked like goddamn a huge beluga whale, like the biggest whale you've seen. They saw this. You saw how large it was because the helicopters were above it, and. The size, the sheer size of these things are crazy. Another one looked like a, a, a stingray on top of the water with a with a snake tail. But you know that could have been some Photoshop shit. I'm not saying it can't. But the re reality is, if it even if it's not, the Lord is bringing those types of things. The vibration and the spirit is out there. And the scriptures talk about how the Lord is gonna have beasts newly created, man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna see creatures of old, and you're gonna see one that the Lord said, "Hey, look what I look what I just made today." You know what I'm saying? Pop it down on the scene, man. That's the right. deceivableness of Esau Edom because he, that's why, that's why, you know, that's why he puts stuff like that in the movies, man. He show you how it's done. So he can make you doubt in these days, man. He'll make it, well, what do you, how do you know if it's not CGI? You know, that, those, that's that, that's that uh, 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 deception that he puts out there, man. But we know the Heavenly Father is going to show us new things, man. Hey, Spirit, he got that scripture. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that is the Spirit because, you know, it could be CJ, I'd say that it could be real. Like, the scriptures talk about Leviathan. We ain't seen him yet, so he's still gotta make his appearance. Hey, real quick, I said, man, the size of those creatures, yeah. Leviathan's larger. Man. You see what I'm saying? They were so huge, man. Like, it was crazy. You know, like, they were like. They were like small islands in the sky. Yeah, they were like, they, they, they were large, man. You know, it, 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 like, even if you sit a helicopter right in front of you, like, the helicopter is pretty big. It's a pretty big uh, vehicle. You see what I'm saying? And they made the helicopters look like, like ants, man. Go ahead, brother. Sirach chapter 43, starting at verse 31. Who has seen him that he might tell us? Who can magnify him as he is? There are yet hid, there are yet hid greater things than these be. For we have seen but a few of his works. With the satellites, the events of airplanes, and transportation of cars, trucks, ships. We will still only have seen a few of the Lord's creation. That's how bad he is. And, that, and that's just on earth. There are many places on earth that human has never uh, even seen or touched. I think about the other planets. So it says, and my father talks about many men. Uh, what they say they only explore 1% of the ocean? Yeah. Can you imagine that? Like, as many people trying to uh, uh, talk about the things that are in the ocean, man. 1%? Like, that's nothing. The Lord even got. Uh, uh, Esau limited from this earth, man. You see what I'm saying? He's only 1% of the ocean. That's how vast it is, man. Esau don't got no clue what's going on. That's a cut to them people that believe the earth is flat. Because yep. if the earth was flat, then you could dis discover more of the ocean. That's right. They ain't even discovered all the land yet, man. You see? 
But they, they worrying about the, if the earth is flat. Shit, how about you figure out the earth first? Man. You see what I'm saying? Oh, it's flat. Hey, but like I said, all y'all flat earthers, I ain't seen one of y'all motherfuckers go to the end and jump off. <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't seen one of y'all reach the edge. Show me some pictures. I want to see some pictures of somebody standing on the edge of the earth, damn it. <laughs> I'm looking like... Right. Look, it's the edge. You know motherfuckers be doing an Instagram. I'm at the edge of the earth. Hey, you know it's crazy? If the earth was really flat, motherfuckers would have been took a picture. Like, yo, what yeah, bro? I'm trying to show it. You me? They, they try to say, like, uh, they try to say, one of their excuses is that that basically Antarctica is really a huge, thick layer of ice that's around the earth. You know what I'm saying? Well, shit, y'all y'all got them Edomite climbers. Climb to the top of that bitch so and show us some pictures, right? Yeah, right. Playing up there, throwing in uh, the damn book yeah. shall we get. Troll. Uh, uh, on Game of Thrones, they had them climbing the damn ice wall. Yeah. They said it was like, what, 400 some feet? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. They climbed the ice wall, so you know Esau's down to do it. You they don't need to climb it. All you need is a drone. That's, That's all it. you need. That's, That's all you need. Drones go miles in there. They don't fake the moon landing. Why can't they go fake? <laughs> Somebody jumping off the edge. That's right. They've been to the moon, though. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but this is a great work of the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. By allowing our enemies to deceive us on this kind of level, man. That's why two birds, one people, they're going to be ashamed, man. When the, when the Lord returns, man. When all their secrets are put out, man. They're going to be ashamed that they they, they believe this lying motherfucker, man. That they believe this base man. Because he's a base man, man. All right? Because he, he, he's the God of this world. All right, because he he he, 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 it was, he did it on purpose to put us in darkness, man. All right, to teach us lies, man. So he he's the only one that knows the truth, man. You'll be a damn fool to believe anything that Edomite got to say. Man. And Esau, Esau tell you you got to work Mondays through Fridays, but then come in. He be like, you've been working Monday through Fridays for a month. He like, hey, I'm gonna need you to come in on Saturdays. You see what I'm saying? You can't believe nothing the so-called white man say. Everything he say to you is a lie. That's right. He says, he says he's a physician of no value and a forger of lies. Forger of lies. So-called white people just lie and lie and lie and lie and lie till they get what they want. You I, see? I, I, I remember that. I experienced that because my, my, I, when I first got my job, I was scheduled to leave at 12 on the Saturday. Then they moved it to 1. Then they moved it to 2. See? Now the new people coming in looking at me leaving at 1. They're like, why you get to go early? Because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but that's just the decept that's the deception of Esau Eden. He just he tries to get you closer and closer to staying longer and longer and longer and longer. He's a liar, man. Right? He never agrees upon the uh, 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 the uh, the agreed time. Man. Yeah. <laughs> he want to keep you in captivity. He want to he want to drain you of everything, man. It's Matthew 10. Uh, so like I said, Matthew. Psalms chapter 10 and verse 7 and it reads, his mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. You know, that's that's a part of uh, Esau's sword. Okay, it's, it's, it's his mouth. Okay, deception. You know, because hey, he's a base man, so he it, it, I, he got to control the people by manipulating, by, by, by deception. Yeah. And one of the things that he's doing these days is now uh, giving everybody money, free money. You know, now we hear about the uh, the, the, the soon to be stimulus. Drop, drop that 1800 shit. <laughs> Another one. They point they talking about 40 years might get one. I read it. They said it's really for the elders. I, 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 for, the, for the older, the for, the, for the elderly. I, I'm getting Hopefully, though. I just turned 75. You, saw <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We get emails at the job saying how they're getting ready to increase our pay. And I'm always thinking, oh, what's coming along with that, man? Because the last time you increased our pay, we have to stay long. Mm. The last time you increased our pay, we have to do more work. Mm. You say you're supposed to hire more people, but it's the same motherfuckers around here. You know what's crazy? Making us do more work. You know what's crazy? He saw so fucking grimy, so, so slimy that they'll increase the pay, right? But everything else gonna go up with it. The right. cost of bread gonna go up, the cost of gas gonna keep going up. So it's gonna feel as if we still getting what you was getting paid before. They just playing another game with you. Got you thinking, oh yeah, I'm getting paid 25 now, but bread could have been two, three dollars, and I was five dollars. So it's really like, say you was getting paid 15, and you was paying that same two, three dollars. It's really you pay the same amount. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these, the same a lot of these larger companies, they're ahead of the curve. They see the numbers years ahead. Yeah. They be like, oh, it's, it's about to be fucked up. Let me let me get these guys a raise <laughs> right now before they actually see everything else. So now that we received those raises like a year ago, or a year and a half or two years ago, now we're starting to see the effect. Now that raise don't mean nothing anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I go to the gas pump, man, I'm like, damn, man. I'm in a much smaller car right now. And I thought paying $30 for the bigger car was a lot. I'm paying $30 for the smaller car, and it's like, damn, it's just, just as perfect. 
Man. I'm like, damn, man. Because prices keep going up. And the prices are going down a little bit, but we don't put our trust in that. But this is a Ecclesiastes uh, 14 and 7. It says, and if he do it good, he do it unwillingly. And at the last, he would declare his wickedness. Okay? So that's Esau Edom. And if he does anything good, it's because he's doing it unwillingly. And also, he's doing it for an all terrible order. He's going to declare his wickedness at the end. So, you know, giving us the stimulus checks could be considered a good thing. But really, why are you giving us the stimulus checks in the first place? Because you credit, you know, the pressure from above and the pressure from below, man. That's right. And then on top of that, you know, we'll take it. I'm sorry. Okay, we're on YouTube, we're on the music world, but you, you use it as a Yeah. The 
Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 8 Behold ye trust in lying words that cannot profit Going back to what the brother was saying Those lying words go back to Esau Edom Telling you about an American dream You know American dream ain't gonna profit our people In the times we coming into Alright so you gotta come back to the words That you have about Shemal Shah Oh, they lying in wait? No, not that one. Lamentations? No, go ahead, brother. Okay, this is uh, Genesis uh, 25 and 27. It says, And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. You see, so Esau was a cunning hunter, man. That's what you see in them uh, 
and those hunting advertisements and commercials and, and poster boards, you usually see Edomites on there. You don't usually see Jake's, you know? ESPN, yeah. Uh, uh, any of these uh, sport shops, you know, sport hunting stores. Right, the hunting stores, the gun stores, yeah. Archery stores, it's Esau out there, man. So yeah. we, don't, we don't see Jake out there doing that, man. And if Jake is out there doing it, you know, that's because they just hanging around Esau. You know, or might, they might be one of the war tribes that's just naturally in their spirit to be around weapons and shit. But there's a difference between a Jake and an Edomite dude. Esau, he's a cunning hunter. And Esau doesn't just hunt, you know, literally. He'll hunt Jake in the hood too. Okay, he'll set up a trap house, you know, have Jake go to that trap house and then one day raid it. You know, they'll, they'll monitor it. Okay, we know, okay, they got this much traffic going in there. That's Esau being a cunning hunter. He doesn't just hunt in the field, he hunts in everything that he does. Maybe doing that with cars too. Yeah. Uh, the other day I see like a, like a nice Mercedes had two hazard lights on them. Uh, one of the doors is open, he'll just sit there on the road. Yep. Send he's a all, bait. He's talking, he's sending traps. Yep. I got one. Uh, this is a back of three. And you now this is uh, a chicken, chicken note and also a cereal at this time, but uh, it still applies, right? It's uh, first, uh, a back of three and 14. Thou did strike through with his staves, the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was asked to devour the poor secretly. You see, that's what they want to do. They want to devour the poor secretly. So then they'll. Esau set up something so like that. Esau set up something and be like, well, we wasn't behind that. You know what I'm saying? That's what Esau do. And now our people shoot themselves down in the neighborhoods. They're like, oh, we had nothing to do with that. How they get them guns then, Esau? You know, ain't no Jake just walking around finding no guns on the street. Esau's putting them there, man. They want to devour our the poor secretly, man. AK 47s, AR 15s. Oh, that Jake in AK 47s. Baby Draco. Jake ain't. Uh, go all the way through high school, but he know how to, he know how to get an AK-47. How? The, the, these guns cost thousands of dollars. What, man? Esau dropped them off, man. Rumble, he had a, he had a bazooka. Yeah, that's what that's really like. I'm saying Esau dropping crates off the hood. How's a crate of weapons going missing? Yeah. Committing crimes. When you watch that movie, The Purge, when they were in, like, I think they were in Staten Island, you know, that's what he's doing. Putting up with blackface. He was hunting down Jake. Yeah. You know, and it also showed the chip in that movie, too. But then you had to get those contacts and you had to get the mark. You know, so they just still keep doing it. But it's going to be like that in these times now, man. When, uh, when Jake's trouble comes, it's going to be like The Purge. You know, they're going to be as madmen sparing none. That's right. You know, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. So they're gonna roll on the whole nation of Israel, man, like a madman. Yeah. And that's why you gotta, the truth gotta be with you because if you're gonna get rolled on, you might as well know where you can go for safety. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? All Jake about to get rolled on, man. Hey, any, and this is why, like, even for all you fallouts out there, man, Lord, when the Lord keep his spirit on us to the end, man, but you fallouts out there, then you still are written in them books, man. They still like, they don't, they, this guy was out there teaching. This guy was out there showing his face. This guy was doing lessons. All right, so you on them books too. So they still coming to your door, assuming that you still was of us, man. Uh, you see? So that's why it really ain't beneficial for you because, but now you're not defended, right? Now you don't have the defense of the Lord anymore, man. Now you're just an open vessel ready to be destroyed. Judges 10, starting at verse 12. The Zidonians also and the Amalekites and the Moanites did oppress you and he cried to me and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods ye, which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Right, so if you're a fallout, you chose another power, you chose another god. So when you're a fallout, you still got you on that level. You're still The Lord saying, go cry to the gods you chose in the first place. Don't cry to me, because I will deliver you no more. That's right. You, you, you ask, the Lord is, is is really about his word, he's about his men, about his people. But only if you, you got to serve him. You know what I'm saying? In this society, they've trained you people to say, you can, like, it's no accountability. You can do somebody wrong and wrong and wrong again, but they still going to be there for you. The Lord ain't getting down like that in his lifetime, bro. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's what I was thinking about this morning. You know what I'm saying? Like, all, that's why I talk about this, this affliction as well for a moment. Brothers, we've lived since the beginning of time. You know, now it's been times we've been in the spirit realm too, but we had these these lifetimes to live, man. 
But now this is the one where the Lord is going to uh, put us in the glory if we follow him, man. Sure. You see? But now just, we got to do it one more time, Akin. You know, brothers and sisters out there, we got to do it one more time. We got to suffer this this uh, wicked generation, these wicked people, one last time, man. And never again, man. So you got to make sure you're on the right side of the tracks this time, man. Sure. You know? It's Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So we, so this fight is still not over. We, we still, we still, we still, uh, we, we still, uh, we still have to fight that good fight. Right? Right. You, you know, we, 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 we try to make it to that 12th round. You know, hey, you know, and we're coming into that 12th round uh, uh, right now. But hey, you know, we, we, we got to get through this last uh, 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 100 yards, man. You know, we got to get through, we got to get through uh, the time of uh, taking trouble, the hour of temptation. Hey, but the Lord, time after time. That's a promise from the Lord. If we endure to the end. We keep our faith. All right? We hold fast to our crown. The Lord is going to beam us up in the chariot. Uh, one, of the, one of the best ways to, to, to help you like that is like, you have to treat every day like it's day one. You know, you can't be thinking to yourself, I've been in the truth this amount of years, this amount of time, I've been this amount of work. Nah, man, you got to treat every day like it's day one. <laughs> we got a scripture for that. But that's, that's beautiful you say that, brother, because... Yeah. Everything that you've done before, it don't matter if you if you believe the Lord's uh, grace. Um. I remember a few years back, Apostle Rama uh, saying, "You only as good as your last week." Uh, you know that that thing. It don't matter if you was if you was hot yesterday. You just put out three lessons. Hey, the next day, start from scratch again. That's right. You've right. you know? been out. You've been out. Like, yeah, I, been, I was out there 10, 12, 15 years. Well, it don't matter if on year sixteen you just decide to stop following the Lord because. That it was off and it, it went off and no. At the end of the day, the Lord might have just brought you in to bring another brother in, but you don't never want to be in that position. You see what I'm saying? Toiling for the Lord for years. You wanted to make your calling, your election sure. That's why we're doing this, man. You know, obviously with the fear of the Lord as well, but go ahead and bring that out, brother. Uh, you go to like 10 or 11. All right, it's Psalm chapter 51, beginning that verse. Uh, I'll start, uh, start at 9, and it reads, Hide thy faith from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. All right, that's what we want the Lord to do. Hide his face from our sins and blot our iniquities, man. Because we don't, man, you know how, how awful of it is to the Lord to bring out your rap sheet of all the fucked up shit you done did. You know what I'm saying? You want the Lord to forget about that, man. You know? So that that's why we, we Lord, hide your face from our sins. Like, forgive me for the things that I've done, man. And this life ain't the lives before. Yep, but how do we uh, uh, blot out our, how, how do we get our sins blotted out? All right, being charitable, going out to the highways and byways, uh, making lessons. Repenting. So, alms, uh, you got it. Repenting. Yep, and this is a form of alms, right? We're showing, we showing love uh, to the nation of Israel. Uh, uh, feeding these people this, this truth. That's right. All right, uh, verse 10, and it reads, Create in me a new heart, O Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a new heart. Create in me a new mind, man. All right, the Lord got to give you a new mind to do this thing, man. So you can't take over the things that you've had in the world and you bring them into the truth. And then you six, seven years in the truth and you still hold on to that peace that you had in the world, man. That means your mind was never new. 99% oh. of a new mind is not a new mind, bro. Right. Little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. That 1% of you that say, hey, yo, every once a year I smoke a cigarette. That's 11, bro. Yeah. All it takes is one time that demon that demon to take over you, man. So the Lord says, create in me a new mind, man. And renew, what did he say? After that, create in me a new mind. What's going on after that? Create in me a uh, clean heart, mm -hmm. O Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. Renew a right spirit within me, man. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we our spirits have always been us, but our flesh was causing us to go off. So we want that right spirit that's following the Lord, man. You know, because the other spirits are trying to come in and take over. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Verse 11, cast me not away from my presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. This got to be the greatest fear in the Bible. This got to be your greatest fear. This is the scripture that should move you when you think about going off, man. Right? Cast me not out of thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit away from me, man. That ought to move you. That ought to shake you with fear when you read that, man. You see? Just like the scripture in Matthew where it says, uh, uh, I don't know you. Get away from me, you workers of iniquity, man. Right? 
You don't want you don't you want the Lord to keep His spirit on you, man. I always pray for all the brothers, the apostles, the elders to keep His spirit on us, man, because that's what separates us from these fucking people. Right. You see, so that that's supposed to move you to always do what's right in the spirit and power of Allah Shmuel Shah. Because once that spirit gone, you brothers have seen these examples of these men that have lost the light, that yeah. have lost the weight. Yeah. You've seen it, man. Dead, man. Dead vessels walking again. And how much worse? We one day we saw the brother's yeah. dog run outside and he threw up right in front. We just got out. We, we you know we saw the dog do it with a whole shit. What did she do? Run over and try to lick it up. We tried to grab her. And it was disgusting. The same way as you men, when you're not you decide to serve the Lord, then you go back into the world, man. That's a disgusting thing, man. So now the Heavenly Father is calling you back to be who you are, you Israelites. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you're the children of God, man. You gotta repent and get right, man, because the days is short. The time is short before the Messiah returns. The John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickened it. You see, and, uh, you know, that, that's the spirit quickening goes back to make the line. So that's how we're we're uh we're reborn again, you know? So it, it's bringing, it is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profits nothing. See, when these people, when they lead the truth, when they go back into the world, what they do, they sown unto their flesh. All right, and this flesh profits nothing. You know, and that's why that's why you gotta be sown into the spirit, right? You know, that's why it's important, you know, to be doing lessons, reading, studying. You know, because when you're doing those things, you're you're sowing unto the spirit. And those things, they're not just for, of course, feed the sheep, all that, but they also keep you in the spirit. That's what you gotta understand. If you go a week without doing a lesson, you are now spiritually dehydrated. You are now spiritually famished, man. Your ass won't go a week without eating. So why would you go a week without serving the Lord? It just don't make sense, man. All right? Let, let him finish on his and I'll see y'all first. All right, it says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You know, and that's why it's important to read because, you know, we, 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 we get in that, uh, we get in the spirit of God watching outside when we read. And that, that, that increases our faith. Okay, that, that keeps us sharp. And when you read, that's how, that's how, a lot of the time, that's how you um, get lessons by when you read. You know, you might read a certain verse and that might, you know, and you, and that might spark your spirit, you know, to bring out other precepts, you know? That's why the scripture is called the oil. I mean, once you, once you get that oil in, your, your, your light shines brighter. You got to have that oil in. My son, my son, oh. This is uh, Psalm 119 and 50. This is my comfort and my afflictions, for the word hath quickened me. That's right. This is my comfort and my affliction, because his word has made us alive, man. We're, 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 America is a damn cemetery, man. It's a cemetery. All these people are dead, man. You see? These people are dead. We're walking on a fucking cemetery, man. You know, we're alive beings walking. And if you ever walked in a cemetery, you know that vibe when you walk up in there, man. Yeah. Being around all them dead bodies, man. Yeah. That's how we are in America's a cemetery, man. Right? And the Lord has given us life in this place. He's lived, He's put that sinew on us, man. That muscle, those tendons, man. The, the knowledge of life. He put the breath in us, man. Well, all of these people are dead, man. Cemetery, man. Yep, and that, uh, it says that's my comfort and my affliction. So yep. when, when we when we when we afflicted and we're going through uh, trials and tribulations and, and when we vex with this place, what we run to we run to the scriptures. Yep. Yep. You see, but this world they run to cigarettes, they run to black mouth, they run to drugs, they, they 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 run up to clubs, they run up to uh to bars. But when you when you when you afflicted, that's where you get your comfort from is the scriptures. Nope. They kill themselves more. Goddamn skeletal bones smoking on cigarettes. Nigga, you already dead. You know it gives you cancer. I know. I know. I'm dead already. That's what they really say. I'm dead already. I know. But go ahead, brother. You have one. Oh, this is all the coming board. This is GMS Spiritual Art. And it, uh, he wanted to get Shalom, seven. Shalom brother. Shalom, brother. This is Psalms chapter 17, verse 8. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. That's right. Want to say something? You got it, bro. Hey, that's right. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings, man. Which is going back to this word. Psalms 90, 91, man. Being in the shadow of the Almighty, man. All right? We want the Lord to keep us. We want him to keep us safe, man. You know, we we, we, we don't want to be under the, the, the bay tree, which is Esau, man. We want to be under the wings of Yahweh Shemel Shot. We want to be kept in righteousness, man. Because if you're not, these people are going to be doomed, man. Just how it was sunny as hell. 
But now it's, it's fucking gloomy out here out of nowhere. Yep. And Dwight, y'all watch me outside, it's a little bit cooler. Yeah. But it's probably about to be a rainstorm through this bitch. But this, just like that, that's how the day of the Lord gonna come up on your ass, man. It was sunny one moment, next minute, a dark cloud came across here, man. That's spiritual too, because, you know, when you watch like Animal Planet and uh, with the birds have like um, little babies, what they do, they hide them under, yep. they cover them up with their wings, yep. you know, and that keep them warm. They give them protection, especially when it's raining. Yep. You know? Yep. And who, who, mom or father there, yep. keeping them safe, man. That's the Lord. That's the Lord watching out for us, man. That's the angels. That's the scriptures. Watching out for us, man. Uh, Psalms 23 and verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For, uh, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That valley in the shadow of death. This is Babylon. This is where we walk. America, it's like the brother said, America is a cemetery. But we're not walking around here fearful. Oh, shit, we're dead people everywhere. No. So, the, the, the rod and staff, we are, we are walking outside. Goddamn, Tom. You got it, brother. Y'all bring out a secret number seven? No, no, no. no. Okay, fine. This is Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley, which is what the brother was talking yep. about. Low land. Yep, a valley is a low land. That's where that's what it means in our Psalm 23. You know? America is, is low morally. Okay? Which was full of bones. Alright? So those bones represent the house of Israel, man. Our people are spiritually dead. You know? And that's and and and, and work our, our people are dry too. Okay? It says it caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry, man. All right, and what makes us pe our people dry? Because Jake is spiritually dehydrated, man. You know, this word is that water that uh, hydrates us and that quickens us, man, and, and, and makes us, you know, uh, alive. Okay, that's the living water, the scripture referred to it as. You know, and that's the point right there. And that also goes back to uh, Job 10. Job 10 and 22, I start at verse 21. Job 10 and 21, before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land of darkness as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death without any order, and where the light is as darkness, man. And that's America, okay? It's a land of darkness and the shadow of death. Death follows us as a shadow in this place, man. Okay, everywhere you go, well, no, now that we're in the truth, it's a little different, but when, you know, everywhere you go, pretty much, Jake has to worry about their life hanging in doubt, as the scripture says. And even in the truth, it still applies to us, too. You know? You know? But it's, it's not as much as someone in the world. And it says, it says, uh, the land of darkness, as darkness itself, America is dark spiritually. And it says, without any order, man. This place has no order, okay? You got women ruling over, uh, ruling over men. You know, uh, servants ruling over princes, okay? And it says, and where the light is as darkness, man. Okay, because they, they put evil for good. And they put good for evil. They put light for darkness and dark for light. You know, in America, man. Like the lady earlier, she wanted to call the cops on us. Like if we're doing a dark work, you know? But really, we were doing the light work, man. That's right. Got any finals? Um, uh, Okay, so I was bringing down, I was holding it for a second. This is uh, Surat, Surat 2. It's rock 2, verse 13, and it says, Woe unto them, woe unto him that, that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not, he not be defended, man. So a lot of our people, man, if they you know, the, the unsure of our people, they're not going to be defended, man. For those of our people who fell out, man, you're sharing, you're going to be showing your, your, your unsure, man. Hunchback Esau, America, you, you left the body. You're not going to be defended, because if you, if you know the spirit of the Alright, the scripture also says, it says, it says, woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will you do when the Lord shall visit you, man? This thing, this, 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 this thing that we're about, man, is about patience, man. It's about maintaining your faith, being faithful unto death, man, being faithful unto the end. Alright, this is what we're out here on the highway to always to do, man. We're out here to warn our people and to bring the good news, man, and, right. to, and to, to tell them to have patience, man, alright, so they, so they can be edified. You know, so they can learn, man. Give yourself a chance, man. Give yourself an opportunity, man. It's never too late. As long as we're out here on the highways and byways, as long as we're out here doing these lessons and putting them on YouTube, man, there's still an opportunity, man. The door of repentance is still open unto you, man. All right? So you can, so you can, build, so you can be built up again, man. 
All right? The scripture also says, and it says, they that fear the Lord, and it says, will we'll not disobey his word. Yep. All right? And they that love him will keep his ways. And if you love the Lord, keep his commandments, man. All right? So this is what it's all about, man. You know, this is, the Lord is showing us how to love him. Because the Lord said, I love them that love me, man. That's right. You want to be sure that you that you played your part, that you've done your part in this faith, man, in this ministry. By serving the Lord in spirit and in truth, man, according to as it's written in the scriptures, man. Not according to the, to, not according to the deception in, in the ways of men. All right? So that's it, man. Okay. Well, hey, man. Hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. We're the Hebrew Israelites. We come in week in and week out. We prophesy the downfall of America, which is Babylon, the great according to the Bible. The so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you Israelite foreigners, you are the Israelites according to the Bible. The so called white people, you belong to other nations, are going into slavery according to the scriptures. With that, we want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Rakhakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David. Until next time, shalom. Shalom. Abba, Abba, Abba. Kwam Yashala.